Good morning, everyone. Welcome to our uh, final session for the budget for FY19. Uh, we have several items uh, that we need to uh, finish up on. Uh, Keith was good enough to provide a, a recap of uh, what the, some of the open items are. So we'll just go down the list and then uh, see where we are. Um, the first one up, I guess, is the uh, water sewer rates. Okay. Mr. Mayor, we were we were discussing the, the, the percentages. <laughs> I can't remember. Eight <laughs> percent was the original, and we said that uh, we should look at four and two. Yep. Um, what did we? Uh, Keith gave us numbers on four and two. We found the. Um, Old bond proceeds to pay for all of the uh, capital um, project, all the PAYGO capital projects. So that pulls all of that out. Um, is that the current use? Uh, <coughs> yes, or is that, or is that the proposed? Uh, what we did is uh, we we looked at we plugged in four percent. And that uh, gave us a revenue reduction of 456510 uh -huh. And if we did that, the, um, the use became 2.1. Two, one. Two, one. Yes. Uh, okay. So when we were without, without that, we were about 1.7. Yeah. And tar so targeted use of 1.8. Yeah, we're sitting kind of right on it. This rain sounds like a cow. Or something. Yeah, it's, oh, it's Chewbacca. Chewbacca. The finding me. There's something wrong with Mr. Pepper. Please silence all like one. I'm out of the loop on that one. No, you so. missed it. You missed it. That's all right. We okay. apologize. Here's your numbers. Here's the numbers. Yeah, so the, the what we found um, about seven hundred and seventy-five thousand for the um, reallocated proceeds to avoid uh, any debt for the water sewer fund, and that brought us to about eighty thousand dollars of savings in our debt service for uh, this year and years to come. You know, so it was great, great. really, really helpful. And so uh, with that, that eighty thousand brought us about eighty thousand under the uh, target. the target. But if we cut that to four percent, the eight percent to four, it would mm -hmm. be it would take us to two one. Right, you right. Two, one, one, one. Or we could cut it by two, whatever. If you wanted to cut it by two, you could pick a, a number in between if you wanted to. What wanted to remind me of what the projected um, fee adjustment per year by um, the consultant was? Is it eight five eight. two 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 two? Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And that brought us yeah, whole. I think in as much as we can flat. Two years. Year. <laughs> no, no, it was like it was two years, three years, I believe. We got back to a positive cash flow. Yeah, I think that's what it was. My memory serves me. I mean, you know, from I the to get it up. Yeah, we've we've not had positive cash flow. Wow. I don't know if it's. I was going to ask that Jack if after the budget this year we could go back and delve from the beginning. Of the of the utility, and find out even if we can from notes or minutes if anyone ever thought this thing, because you know this is. I mean, it works. The water's on. Stuff gets, but but it still doesn't want to. It comes close to, to evening out every once in a while, and then it bottoms out for a little while. I think it's a balancing act in part, you know, because you never want to gouge ratepayers. You want know, to be right. careful. Yeah, because we're not profit oriented. But I, I think that the way that this is set up, you should be able to see two years. That you should be able to see two years or a year out and say, we got we have something coming that we're we're going to have to address. Yeah. Either one way or the other. Oh God, this thing. <laughs> so that would okay. So that was one of the. 
This is the phased approach. Uh, this is eight and uh, five, three, two and a half, two and a half. Eight, eight seven, five. This is this is four. This is five. this is the reduction. But uh, eight, eight <coughs> yeah. If we went four, seven, uh, five, five, three, three, two and a half, two and a half, two and a half, two and a half. Mm -hmm. This was his uh, projection. Ever having the the eight and the seven. You know, those those are the things that scare me. I mean, yeah. threes and yeah. twos. It's you know, you're like you're sticking with consumer you know, price index, maybe rate of inflation. Mm -hmm. You know, people will expect that. Going up. <laughs> rate of my paycheck going up. Yeah, yeah. Oh, it's going up. That's. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> that's a good thing. No joke. I mean, it is going up. It just gets eaten right away. Right. Well, healthcare, right? Yeah. Uh, the main difference uh, by cutting this uh, four was in here the uh, the funding, uh, and you got to remember this is going to save uh, taxpayers in the future if we uh, avoid avoid debt. If we can fund our right. CIP from cash, right. it's going to benefit everyone. So if we hold it at eight, uh, we avoid a lot of debt uh, in the future, and thus it's going to be easier for us to hold the rates. And so <coughs> his he had two objectives or. Uh, two advantages of of, of, hit, of hitting it for eight this year was is to reach our target of three million in uh, year 21. Uh, this this uh, results in getting there in 23, and in less uh, less funding from cash. Well, I, more I, more long-term borrowing. I like that, but but if, just to counter that for a second, we just found a bunch of cash to to take some debt expenses off of our books for not only this year but years future so we've helped to address that already right yeah a and little so bit we, yeah, a little. Yeah. We, yeah we make yeah, steps eight thousand right a year but right, right. But jim had asked a question and i i think he I doesn't remember, remember what it is no no about the the uh what would the four percent mean to the average right to the what we say 40 percent of our users are minimum Users, correct. What would um, be that? That was the question. And then that is well, a lot. Of, I used to think like the minimum user who lived across town had mm -hmm. the same bill I had, but that's not necessarily true. It has to do with your usage. <laughs> Having spent ten years trying to learn how to read my water bill, <laughs> <laughs> instead of just paying it. But the the. Well, I guess the question was, you know, four percent. For a minimum user, I don't know. For me, it's four dollars, maybe four and a half dollars. But for a minimum user somewhere else, yeah, it, that makes so I'm sense. not sure. I'm that not sure if that is a good comparison. Eight percent was, if I remember, sixteen dollars on the average. Okay. okay. Right. Yeah. No, eight eight percent on the app. That would mean the average quarterly bill is two hundred dollars, and that's higher than. I think it's like ten ten dollars. It was the it was way that the consultant like four, answered the question that we gave him that seemed to be maybe confusing at first, but then made sense. But I can't remember what the answer was. The answer was there are this many people. Is this uh does anybody remember Keith when you sent that answer? <coughs> uh, the follow up. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you can see the average quarterly bill is a couple hundred dollars, so 4% of that would be about $8. So the average quarterly $8. bill is $200. Oh, $200. $200. Right. Oh, wow. Now, let's also remember that when the consultant does this stuff, consultants always go for the highest impact. So what he's saying is in order to reduce our future debt to the max, 8% is what we should go with. But then you have to balance that against what the people can afford at a, at a one shot. Right. And uh, that's why I think that 4% in my mind makes sense. Jack, I can't see from that end. Does that go from 207, and I just got these glasses, someone put them back. 219, 227, 233, 239. And all the way down at the end? Yeah. 
262. 2027. I'll, I, from my standpoint, Mr. Council President, I can go along with you know, where the group finds a comfortable, but at some point, a larger discussion of how, you know, in 2027, a consultant doesn't send us something that says 2036, and that says 300 some odd, because at some point for a group of people who are using less and flushing less, we've got to, we've got to at some point over the next 15 years, at least put something in the ground that's going to stay there for a while that does, you know, everybody can deal with the, you know, the freezing sewer pipe and stuff like that. But I, I will say that you, I think you're correct. I think the consultant will bid very conservatively. I think Keith will, with all due respect to him, nothing from over there on that side. <laughs> <laughs> but at some point, we've got to have a discussion either as to A, where it became apparent that it was never going to, and B, is there outside of the standard rules that are always brought to us, how this can be, if $80,000 of found takes care of some of the debt that's coming in some of those projects. But I think a long term, because people, aren't, I, I can't see if, if, if that's the average bill. So that means that my bill by then is, if I'm about $100, $100 less. I'm thinking about I'm thinking about Jake's girls when when they're in high school and watching everything they own three times a day, right. and I, and what happened, you know. I think Jim, it's about that. The, the other part of this presentation, I wasn't at the council meeting, so I don't at that council meeting, so I don't know um, what discuss, level of discussion you guys had. But when it was presented uh, to us and we started going through it, there was the equity conversation um, where um, there is a model out there where you know based on income based on things like that you can actually um, moderate the the base rate okay and yet and yes you, you know it's a business service it's not this is not you know like fire or police where you don't get charged for it it's just everybody gets the service mm -hmm. um, you know this is you pay for what you use but you know also embodied in these rates is we were, you're also paying for the maintenance of this massive system that we right. all have to pay into. Which is not going to get cheaper. No, but it, but but based on equity, if you start to dial down, you know, you know, uh, the average cost to or the base cost to a family that is lower income, then it makes it easier on um, on the the user who's you know just a family in Salisbury or an individual or a couple in Salisbury. Who has, um, you know, um, is at or below some level that we set and say, you know what, at this rate level, you don't pay as high a base rate because, um, you know, we want to ensure that you have clean, safe drinking water and you know, we're willing to subsidize the system in other ways. Now, it may mean, you know, the <coughs> higher income users and are, are paying an increased rate over time, but. I, I think the other thing you've got to remember is when this is eight, these numbers are lower because we're not, we're, we have taken care of a lot of the debt up front. Up front. So. So we plugged in four. Yeah. <clears throat> Keith, is it possible, <laughs> is it possible to plug in six, sort of twirl around, click our heels twice and have that whole thing change mm -hmm. and show us what it is? Yeah. We can plug in six in the other sheet. The other okay. Sheet. That's right. <laughs> I mean, so I think six is a should be considered as an you know, as a as a as an alternative. But you'd be you can pretty much see where you'd be um, somewhere in between the uh, the two. So right now, uh, the, our target of reaching three million, we arrived to our destination. You can see here about uh, one, two, three, four, uh, five years out. Under the eight percent, we were in three the year twenty one and three years, so we might be some, somewhere in between, like likely in twenty two, in that in that time frame. As far as reach, that's one of our objectives is to get our uh, operating reserves to. For me, what's more important is to try to avoid debt. It, 
uh, with our improvements. I, I, I mean, it's I totally more important than reaching the three million sooner. Yeah. I totally agree with you. Yeah. But, you know, it, so we're somewhere between four, four and eight. Sounds like either four, you know, four, six, four, six. Come on, I'm, I'm. Don't let me hang in here. What do you? I would just say again, I think we need to go back and look at the beginning. I think it would be a very good exercise for us to historically look back and say, is it 1990? Is it 1993? Where is it where the cost of everything in the ground started to be more than just the cost of water? So I guess it was always like that. But I, I still think it's important to look. I'd like to also discuss, and Keith, I know there are rules about this, but the idea of taking money that we have, instead of having to sit out here and not work year after year after year after year, Yet on the other side, we try on the other side of the budget, we try to incentivize people coming in. We try all of those things. If there are infrastructure things, I mean, nobody wants to put got new sewer pipes on some street in their in their budget message because that's about as interesting in a photo opportunity as uh, you know as watching you know. <laughs> but as soon as there's a exactly leak in the as soon as there's a leak and somebody's looking at a twelve percent. I know Keith <laughs> is adverse to having money go back and forth, and I know it's utility it's supposed to stand, but at some point we started that utility with some kind of money. So, and I'm not saying that's what we no, should do. I think you're, oh. yeah, <laughs> yeah, I was trying to tell you. <laughs> <laughs> that was really good. I was studying for it like this. <laughs> and then, really good. I went to, to Old Town Deli. <laughs> <laughs> if half of us, if 40% of us are low end users or minimum users, it would be nice to know from the consultant where the user is like at the 75% mark, what that means. I know that what he said in his message, and I can't find the email, what he said in the message was, well, using your billing system, and it, you know, after that I started to cloud over a little bit, using your billing system, it's, we're unable to, to say how many people are, does anybody else remember that email or am I just, am I hallucinating? Huh. Wouldn't be the first no. time on Pack 14. <laughs> two, 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 two things that, two things that I'm seeing that, if you're or there on the no, chart. I, one thing that you said, one thing I saw on the chart simultaneously. I mean, if you look at the chart and you look at each of those scenarios, mm -hmm. there is a projected stable rate of increase for a long period of time. You know, mm -hmm. two percent, two and a half percent, something mm -hmm. like that. And you know that again. You know, we all deal with that, and you know, when we buy a gallon of milk, whatever, gas, right. anything. You know. However. Um, it's it's the front end issue. So I I think this I think we're having the right conversation about how to spread that increase a little bit. You know, even if it's in the but another thing that Jim is saying that that I think we've got to talk about is this notion of we've got funds for and I'm not talking about general funds. And I don't know, I know if you were just talking about that or if you were talking. But in my but, house, you get it from under each couch cushions. Yeah. yeah. But the yeah. the system growth funds that we've got there, the capacity funds. Right. We don't we don't have a capacity issue. So what would we use that for? Right. Running pipes to some development? The developers should do that. We don't want right. to run a new pipe. We don't want to that's it's basically an incentive for sprawl development. Right. I'd rather see, you know, either um, the developer pay for it or the developer pay for it ultimately through TIF. You know, I, I don't I don't want us to no conversation that I've had with a developer at this table or in my office in two and a half years, and, and not once when we were, you know, when you were mayor and, and I was on council, was not once during that time did we ever say, yeah, we'll we'll pay to run the we'll pipes. We'll run it out you. there. Yeah. No. <laughs> well, the other thing too is you got to remember that part that of that debt that was incurred, yeah. like you were talking about an autopsy to go back, right, was because we did, we did that. We did, and that created. Yeah. The debt. If if we hold them, if we hold the people who are hooking up, and at the same there. at the same time, 
And I, Mr. Moles was very funny in his reply to us. No, there's nothing on this spreadsheet that could possibly not be funded. And I was like, well, there's only really one part of the budget that I'll buy that from, and it is this part of the budget. You know what I mean? Everybody else, you know, he's, everybody comes in with their wish list. They put it all on there, and then they hope it doesn't get moved back one year, and then the next year it doesn't get moved back another year. I mean, that's – but if you look at, at his – is there any place? Is there even, I mean, granted it'd be bonded probably, and that would only generate a, a, a wee bit of money. We, we spread a couple things on Did this you? basis, yeah. Okay. You know, we didn't have a lot of time to do that because the consultant's report came in right before um, budget had to be finalized. But yeah, we there was a little, there was a little bit of that, and things <laughs> that were stacked up in 19 and that we spread out over 2021, 20, 22, 23. Um, Mr. Council President, are you looking for someone at the table to say, hey, 19, 5, 20, 5, 21, 5, 22, 3? Are you looking for someone to do that? Do you, is that is that where we're headed? I, I, where we're headed is we got to figure four, out what? Four or okay. six. Okay. I think we all said eight is, eight is out of the question, correct? Yeah. Okay. Well, only if the following year is one yeah. well, i guess it's how we see, get there that's, that and, and that's seven, that's yeah. the thing i mean you you have two choices we can slam it and then move quicker towards the debt reduction and positive flow right. or we can spread it and have more consideration for the citizens all right well keith then can i ask this question when we do get there This is what I'm afraid will happen. I'm afraid someone will come to the mayor with their budget thing and go, ah, which happens every year. So though I'll probably get to do a 20, this is 19, I'll probably get to do a 20 budget and maybe a 21 budget, I'm not sure. But there has to be some sort of guarantee to the elected officials from staff that if we do this, Barring any, you know, someone blew a hole in a large sewer pipe on some street that feeds everybody in the city, <laughs> that there has to be some sort of guarantee to us that within your best estimate and your best professional knowledge, that we're not, that the people who sit after here aren't going to hear this same, and I'll be honest with you, from my perspective after almost 14 years of reading these things, it does become a bit much every year that it's the sky is falling. And every year you push and prod, as you should, as the chief financial officer, the elected officials to sort of get where they need to be. But then the next year it's a, it's a push and prod again. And it's, I know you're looking at the mayor, but you do the same thing to him. I know that. Well, Keith does. Well, well Keith doesn't yeah. do it. It's not Keith. But, but it's, I, it's, it's, it's a, but, for me, know, it was Shawanda. They sent Shawanda <laughs> during those years to do it to me. I, I feel your pain. Yeah. By the same token, things are going to happen. Sure. And it's our accountability to make sure that we, do, we make the best decision that we possibly can, given all the information we have. True. Sure. You know how I feel about that. I know. I don't know. I mean, I'm nuts about If something that. big came up, Jack, though, wouldn't the department head go to Julia and Julia through the mayor and then to us and say, this is an emergency procurement and it's probably going to yeah. come out of surplus anyway? Yeah, I think the big question from my perspective, from where I'm sitting, is just that we need, whether it's a plan that starts with four and four and then right. three, two, right. you know, or four, 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 and then, you know, two, two, you know, whatever the plan is. That it doesn't shortchange us in a major way that we hear two years from now, and I think exactly. this is what you're saying, that we hear, oh, if only we had done eight percent then, but now if we do eight percent increase this year, we'll be, you know, right. we want to avoid that. We want a real solid plan for, uh, you know, for the at least the length of term of the analysis that these consultants have done. Well, Mr. I can go, I can go five percent for the next five years. If that's a starting point, if we want to go, I can I can shift a little bit with what my colleagues say. But if we need a starting point, I can go five percent for the next five years. Marty, just to give me Somebody a number. Somebody go lower. Give me a number. <laughs> a number. Four yeah. seconds. I'm I'm comfortable with five. I'm on the same page as you, where I, I dislike the idea of debt and just paying 
for interest over an extended period of time. Oh, and, and you, you know, my personal finances, I'll take a hit today so I'll be free tomorrow. You know, <laughs> there's, there's an inspirational song here. I, feel like I agree. I agree. I, I just don't want to be at five. Yeah. I just don't want to hurt the customer. No, I, I can't six. believe that I'm sitting here going, going the other way. Are you? Are you? I'm, I'm just. You'd like to get it done? No. Oh, no, are you down no. lower? No. Oh, you went lower. I wasn't sure which way. No. I, you know, I think when you look at the. It, it, there's there's the part where you know we're worried about today and increasing it on our rate users because this would be the third year in a row that we've sat here and increased water and sewer rates um, but there's the understanding of the big picture uh, like Jack you know the debt is is a big concern I mean we can what we're doing is going to be shifting some of this stuff to debt service, which mm -hmm. down the road is going to cause higher, higher interest rates, high, yeah. higher interest rates, which is going to make the water sewer rates higher. And, and I think so, if I'm you look at the graph where you know if we have it low this time, you know, in ten years, it's the rates are higher. If if, if we do as much as we can up front, you know, I, I think that makes those rates go down five, six, seven, ten years down okay. the road because we're not we're not encumbering more debt. Right. I think that that's the, the concern that I have. And um, and Keith, if you could pull this up, this would be helpful to me because I'm not gonna mince words with you. You gotta sell this. You know, when you're grocery shopping. So my question is is if we could go back to the water and sewer rate chart that showed us what the other cities were doing. It would be very helpful for me and I'm not gonna lie to you. Look right at somebody in the grocery store that's still lower in Franklin. <laughs> I mean, I'm not going to, I'm going to say it uh, straight up, you know, so, <laughs> thank yeah, you, it's, that's uh, a whole, remind me to say that, that's a whole, <laughs> don't forget that word. <laughs> but in, in terms of if competitive, if water and sewer rates make us competitive or not, and I'm not sure whether or not place makes us the most competitive of, of all, because this is, again, these, these rates are considerably lower than anywhere on the East Coast. And even if we had the highest rates, our, our property taxes on the East Coast are so much lower than most. Mm -hmm. So I, I, that wine and I can I can shut down in the grocery store. <laughs> um, it's just but then there's the, all the case studies of cities that didn't maintain their water, exactly. and it becomes a major issue when you have an entire generation of people that are. I have teach. brown clothes. <laughs> I teach. Let's, yeah, let's go, yeah, let's go with no, the clothes. No, not brown. Yeah, yeah but let's go with the clothes, not brown. the real bad stuff. But you know, it, it's water. This is what creates civilization. Where is the water? And is the water good? <laughs> I mean, at the same time, we have that balancing act where we don't want to be so nervous about water that we're throwing too much money at it. But it looks like we have a reason here with the debt outstanding. I was filling the Keurig pot this morning, going, "I'm going to figure out how much this is costing me this morning." <laughs> <laughs> So, we were all at five, and Mr. Council President, you want to go a little lower? No, this is like this is like reverse. I, I can't <laughs> reverse. No, were you? Were you? <laughs> I was saying four. Four. Yeah, four. we did. But but you know, I, my favorite expression, as you know, is "pay me now, pay me later." That's right. Yeah. And but that's I, what and we're I'm, dealing I'm with. Fighting with myself. Yeah. Well, is that yeah. four this year or four right. across for the next yeah. five? <laughs> no, five. I, I could do five now and then see. I want to see what happens. I would do two. I want to see what happens. How do we, um, can we do that, Keith? Yeah, we're just choosing this year. And we'll yeah, just, see how but we'll saying, see uh, how, we can, how. We can blow it out once we get this. <laughs> okay. Because part, partly uh, they're still experiencing the real cost of the new plant. They have not got to see what the electricity is going to be exactly. So we're, right now they're working with estimates from engineers. So Mike, can you has, do me a favor then, please? And I say this, Mr. President, you just need to gavel me. Go ahead. But I've been listening to how much that electricity was going to cost that new plant for the last seven years. Let's get on it. Let's get on it. I mean seriously. And it's kept us from making decisions. And oh well, you know, everybody's sitting there waiting for the other shoe to drop. Let's go. <laughs> just I know I know. I mean, just you know all this discussion about what to do you know when the when the new plant goes online because it'll work so much better. But then we may negate everything we get because of the cost of the electricity. 
cheap. But it worked better. It's not cheaper. I think well. And amen. Amen. I just if we can get to how many tops? I know it just came on. It's been on for what? When did we flip the switch? Two months ago? Uh, November. No. End of November. Just December 1. December 1. So we've got coming up on six months. Can we do like I do, multiply that by two and get a general idea? Is it going to be more in the summer? I think our budget's accurate on the um, electric. You know, the, the other question that's going to come up here soon is at some point it's going to, again, be cheaper to do um, a net meter or behind the meter um, solar or something like that. At some point that's going to happen because electric rates, you know, which had plummeted and electric was cheap, so all of a sudden it made no sense to do solar. Now it's getting more expensive, so right. guess what's going to happen? It's going to make sense to do solar. We've got to send that lady out for that little house. Yes, we do. Actually, we do have to send those people that. out to that little yeah. house yes, on we Everton do. Drive. The day of the river, or the uh, ribbon cutting. <laughs> yeah. The day of the ribbon cutting, we talked about we yeah. looking over and pointing around. There's this the huge spot. piece of property, and on, even on city property, we yeah. have uh, we have land, which I yeah. think was discussed a long time ago, right? Um, yeah. As a potential location to yeah. do solar. Solar. Problem. All right. What's, what what's do you want to do? Or, um, what do I want to do? It sounds like we have consensus for five. Can we? Can if we it. give Keith the five over five years, can we walk out of here and have him come back and have that? What that will do to the chart? Well, what is chart? Know that, yeah, that, that's a, that was from the consultant. That was from the consultant. He's got to get. He's got to get them. We don't own that. We don't. He had to go to them and get the thing last time. Which he can do again. It takes about ten minutes. I mean, if he's there, it only takes about ten minutes. For you can't do it in your head. No, no, no. That's a <laughs> twenty-two. That's a straight it's going to be in between uh, twenty-three and twenty twenty-one. So we kind of we kind of know. We know it's going, to, it's going to be a little short. Can you put that slide back up? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and and one see what my and guess would be. Yeah. My guess would be right in here somewhere. Councilman Arrington, you did mention something about you know a right. tiered system or points. some sort of. Yeah. Um, you know, and the mayor brought it up too. Some reduction for the lower end user or socioeconomic. If we start with five instead of, and let's say four is the real number, a four percent, but that gives you some wiggle room at that five percent to be able to do some adjustments down and still yield the same amount of money. If you want to give some incentives or breaks to lower end users or lower economic end. I'm, I'm not math, Keith, but if you go four and seven is eleven and five is 15.5, then your average over the three years is five anyway. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Let's see what's If you put five in there, uh -huh. your debt's going down, so that number is going to get, that number can be lower. Okay. And still the same thing. Well, then would you saying. prefer that I made a motion to do 19, 20, and 21 at five? Does that no, 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 no. Okay. No, no, no. Well, we can't five. set next year. We can't yeah. set next year. Next year. But I... Yeah. If we do five, we know two things are going to happen. One is the debt's going to be affected in a positive way. Right? Mm -hmm. And we know that it will establish a, a, a baseline so that we, next year when we go into it, we can see what the impact was and then we can make a decision next year. So for the typical user at 5%, do we know how much their bill is going to go up or um, going to go up? Uh, roughly, about $10. Huh? About, $10. Ten. about ten dollars. So ten. that's an additional forty dollars per year that they forty dollars per year. That that. You okay? I'm comfortable with Cold. that. All right. We have. It looks like we have consensus then. Yeah. So we're looking at five percent. I can try to sleep. That's okay. I can't believe that I was fighting the other side of it. <laughs> It's okay. That's why we do this. All right. So we look at a five. Uh, someone's going to have to lead the health care discussion. Six, uh, isn't it? Jeannie, or do you, or do you want to take it? <laughs> um, well, I can introduce, firstly, that the 10% um, estimate that Care First uh, brought to us was reduced by a formulary program that um, we were able to get approval from uh, the Wakamco Board of Ed. I got it down to eight. We negotiated from eight to six. So six is what we plugged in 
in the mayor level when we brought to you to everyone. Mm -hmm. So we, it it held. We were concerned that it might not hold. So that's that was great news. That's good news. Um, and in addition, we did we did run some numbers. Uh, Julie, do we want to introduce the uh, estimates on the PPO? Uh, yeah. Um. And would it be uh, so? And pull up those numbers. Is that in your email on the fourth? Yes. Oh. Trying to get out. Of it. So we sent out an email. Yeah, I sent out uh, Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't seen that in about 18 years. <laughs> That's my water bill. <laughs> Here's the memo that everyone got. Right. Um, yeah, so I think the, the gist of it is the PPO coverage that we offer that about 175 employees or retired persons take advantage of um, is because Blue Cross Blue Shield is so deep in every market, um, there isn't really a need to go out of market because you can almost get Blue Cross Blue Shield everywhere. And the difference in cost um, for us to cover um, our portion of staff that have PPO is, is very expensive um, and if we were to continue to offer PPO if folks want to take advantage of that um, I, I take I have PPO but I didn't really realize that I didn't need it because EPO is everywhere or I can take advantage of Blue Cross because it's everywhere um, so if we the proposal that, that um, Jeannie is sort of and Keith have come up with is um, still offer PPO but we wouldn't we wouldn't pay any more than what we pay for the EPO for our portion. Mm -hmm. The employee would have to pick up the rest of that, um, which would have a savings of about uh, total. Keith, what was that? One hundred and seventy-five. One seventy-five. Um, how many? How many? I know it changes. How many people are currently in PPO? Do we know? I think it's about one hundred. One hundred and seventy-five. One hundred seventy-three. It's about a thousand dollars a person on average. So if we if we did that and we change, we, what's the delta per person for the, per, for the individual? Individual, it's a thousand yeah. per person. Yeah, 175 savings and then 173 people. So just over a thousand dollars. If a person stays on the PPO and the benefit is reduced, it's going to cost that person about 960 dollars a year. Mm -hmm. Have we educated? The, like you said, I didn't know. Probably. Have we educated? Because you probably would have people yeah. dropping mm -hmm. a lot the regular by, on their own. We could we could do a better job, I think. Okay. It, what I know, because I personally went through it, is the vastness. It keeps getting the EPO options keep expanding, and people who might have jumped in years ago with PPO and just haven't thought about it, the coverage Blue Cross is continually expanding. Unless you're going to see a witch doctor, you're pretty much recovered, honestly. I mean, it's, it's uh, I mean, because our family goes and sees specialists across the bridge. We have a lot of different things, and it's all covered. It's all in-house. So it's a, it's a vast, um, and people can actually individually on their website go and click and see if your doctor's in coverage so people can make that decision, um, which is really easy. Here's my issue, my personal issue. My personal issue is... I don't like to change something on people who are getting the benefit because that's what they assumed they were getting when they took the job. I have no issue with it on an ongoing basis for new employees. That doesn't resolve the issue. In other words, we're leaving, if you look at it that way, we're leaving a potential 173000 on the table. However, if we do an education thing and tie it in with that, we may buy just by people saying, "Wait a minute, why am I paying this anyway? If I'm co if I've got Blue Cross and we're and it, we're covered pretty much all over the place." So that's my opinion. I don't know if anybody else have an opinion about changing it. What we've done in the past, I think, is say for new hires, that's the, what, the PPO. That's my point. That's is exactly the, that the PPO correct. would not be available. We did that with. I agree with. With with Andy, 
but then I'm worried that Kim comes in and says, this is what I know about the pyramid that, that, that Blue Cross Blue Shield comes in with. <laughs> this 73% increase in specialty drugs could literally be one person. The entire time that I was mayor, there was one spouse of an employee here that blew up everything. My argument to Blue Cross Blue Shield was, well, why do you call it insurance then? It's not insurance against anything if one person, and you couldn't mm -hmm. say to that person, I'm sorry, your, yeah. your spouse can't have. Mm -hmm. um, but the, what I'm worried about is that one person ends up needing something from the PPO that we, that we would no longer offer if we took it away from everybody. It would be that one specialty that's outside. Is, could we still offer them the PPO? It's just, it's, there's pay more, about $100 more a month. Difference so they wouldn't know. PPO. So you're hoping if it's yeah. something as special, specialty drugs, that someone would know they need, you know, they would know they need to do this. But if EPO is taking care of everything from podiatry or allergies or uh, cancer. even cancer, you know, things that, that you do have to go across the bridge for or to DuPont for, things like that, then it doesn't save us now, Keith, to just make it EPO from now on to new employees. I mean, I'm sure it does in your spreadsheet in 2027, much mm -hmm. like the water, the water spreadsheet. But we put it on the plain, e plain. I don't know if it's we're taking out the PPO or just saying we're not. We're covering up to the EPO level. Right. So if I pay $150 a month for a family, PPO is 250 a month, but that may turn into 350 a month. So. Well, there'd be no way anybody could do that, right. especially if you were somebody who worked in public works, yeah. especially if you were somebody who was a, a staff. Yeah, they, a may, staff they, they might price them out of it. It's roughly $80 more a month. There you go. Other thoughts? I, I have this sheet I could send out if that, that has the detail uh -huh. of the uh, coverage is all blown up. This is what uh, describes in detail the difference in coverage. Keith, does it also show us that we were talking about the formulary too and the expansion of those drugs, how those drugs bring down the cost? Uh, this does not. This is just uh, EPO and PPO zoom, zoomed in on. Uh, but to, to quantify it, the general fund is 139000 and the water sewer fund is 35000 so the total savings would be 174 to the city. So that's, that's, what, that's what it quantifies to. Is there any way to cut that in half and meet the employee halfway and only take a, uh, a savings of 90? Would you say 100 and 175. Uh, sure. Maybe you don't hit the people who are retired or on fixed income at that point. Yeah. I know what I have there. Oh, good We could get Jeannie up here too if you'd like to hear her speak to it. Jeannie's HR. Jeannie's HR. <laughs> because instinctively I'm saying, don't I want to have this conversation with someone from HR that could give me yeah. a stronger sense of we get to any I'd like to instinctively have this conversation with Blue Care for, Care for Blue Cross Blue Shield, but I will say reflectively I'm for paying up to the lower one and having the employees pay beyond that if we could put in some sort of there's, there's mechanism that would allow few. retired individuals, fixed income individuals, not it, it, I'll be honest with you, yeah. seven years ago it was there's too many people going to the emergency room. So we you know, instead of a primary care physician. That's what was causing everything to blow up. And then once we got that taken care of, it was the one employee mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. whose spouse was... This, so regardless this, of what we do, we're I, gonna Honestly, it reminds that. me of the water and sewer. It, no matter what, it's gonna be the sky is falling, and there's no way for a municipality, and it's our job, respectfully, to you and to staff, to go to the grocery store and try and figure out a way to say, Everything's going up, but then yeah, there's I mean, always the, honestly that's I mean it's not, it's not if, if that's not politics and it's and I guess if you're I guess for me after 14 15 years of doing it you just say is there ever a reason it doesn't I sat at this table with Blue Cross Blue Shield <laughs> going you get savings at the end maybe but but it just goes back to the consortium yeah.
a lot of folks uh, choose the PPO. Um, I, I know it's hard to read. Define, it's, it's hard to read the lying. fine print, and you say, what, you know, "I don't want to risk with my health. I'm going to take the best coverage." And 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 so you're in a hurry. You you look at it. You, it's hard to digest all this, so you choose the best because the city's paying ninety percent of it. Why wouldn't you? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I it's like so I know that's my choice. I would if I'm only paying ten percent. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna I'm gonna jump to the better coverage. Some this of just it makes too sense. is so I'm a diabetic. Five years ago, PPO did not cover my endocrinologist or EPO did not cover my endocrinologist, but it does now. So it's sort of like when you get car insurance. How often do you revisit that? And right. Do you revisit it enough? Mm -hmm. I just don't think we have maybe those that group of PPO looking to see if what wasn't covered that they needed. Is now covered under EPO. Through the money of switching. If, if, if we're paying 90%, there's very little incentive not to go to the higher level. You know, we're right. 75%, I think, uh, for, for family that coverage, but for the individual, it's 90%. Mm. Again, mine is more philosophical mm -hmm. than it is financial. Mm -hmm. I don't have any issue with going forward saying we're only going to pay up to whatever the we pay for the Blue Cross Blue Shield or whoever it happens to be. But I do have a problem. I've always had a problem. <laughs> and I've, I've come up against this in business all the time with benefit packages. And, and you know, we had talked about people who took a job knew what they were what their benefits were to take those away from those people because that was your call as the whoever it was whether it's the CEO or whatever I have no trouble making the jump in the future but I do have a problem and I always will have a problem with that so for me the discussion about the cost mm -hmm. is a moot point at this point but I certainly think that we can I, personally, I think through education, mm -hmm. you're going to have a bunch of people who decide, to do who decide wait a minute, why am I paying? Why don't we just get the whole, okay. just pay it? I, maybe I'm, I'm, but that's my, and, I, and that's not going to change no matter what Jeannie says. So. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> on that note. You made that clear. On that note. Uh, uh, well, for success. If I'm. Because my issue with that is under that, then you can never renegotiate the employment contract. And there comes a time where contracts have to be renegotiated. And then people are open to the market if they don't like the new conditions. Said like a true then they need a lawyer. <laughs> <laughs> be, be, it's you the know first I mean? time since you've done the council that you've interrupted. <laughs> <laughs> the lawyer thing came up. No. But, but, I hear what you're saying. You yeah, know, I do. You know, I do. But, but, Every relationship, every business relationship I have in my life gets renegotiated pretty periodically, typically annually, but sometimes longer than that. Yeah. And you know, the the idea that you come in to work for this company, the terms change. You, at that time, you say, "Do I continue to work with this organization, or do I seek an organization that can provide the terms that I find desirable?" And I think that's an individual choice that people have to make. I respect your. <laughs> yeah. If we were to discuss the other members of the consortium, considering that this is a contract, is that something that we would have to do in closed session? Uh, this the only lawyer in the room. The, this this decision doesn't affect the consortium. No, I know that. that. But if we were to discuss the other members of the consortium, and yes, I know they we went. Have, to, yes, we would have. To I was going to say if they session. went, and, and I'm not sure I have a if I've formulated my questions about formularity number two <laughs> yet, but normally in this discussion we usually have some sort of paper that shows what everybody else's or could we get what everybody else's costs were are we do is the, is are the board and the county in the same but we are are they having a problem with this uh, these high-end prescriptions Yes, Jeannie's shaking her head. Yes. They have a 15% increase facing it. 15? 15. Okay, let's move on. We got six. <laughs> um, 
questions for Jeannie. A couple, uh, you, you had one, didn't you? I, I, I was just saying it seems like this is a car. I mean, I don't want to put you on the spot. It seems like it's something that one should Yeah, you want to put yeah. it on the spot. Oh, yeah. That's her job. <laughs> <laughs> it happens daily. Yeah. So how many people would be impacted by this decision should we decide to go with the coverage that, and I always get the acronyms confused, EP. The EPO and the yeah. BPO? Yeah. Currently, it's pretty much split right down the middle. So okay. 189 uh, that are not including retirees. We haven't, so that's just water, sewer, and general fund. All right. So about half. That's about 50 50. 50 50. So. Right. And I really think that the majority of them may not even be aware because they've had PPO for a very long time that. Care First has penetrated the market so deeply here on the shore. And as well, we have worldwide doctors. Right. Mm -hmm. They can just look it up on video. They, yeah, there's a telephone number too. If they're going out of the country to find where they're going, where the Care First doctors are, right. if they need a physician while they're out of the country. In so that network. goes back to my point. So you're feeling is we could educate people out of the program and save the money. Can we put way. together an education package and? Uh, Absolutely. Okay. It's, it's difficult to defy inertia. If if people are where they are and comfortable where they are. Right. Well, tough. then less than one tenth of one percent mm -hmm. of those individuals that carry PPO have actually used. Going out. So uh, something that's, outside that's, of the network. Yeah, it's, 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 well, then I understand <laughs> Councilman Rudisell about the contract, and and as much as I don't want to put any more work on you, but it might be a good idea for somebody to sit down and go, if you don't change because you don't need this anymore, then we're eventually going to do this for you. Well, we because if, take, if yeah. it's one tenth of one percent mm -hmm. that needs to go out. Can we we're just not looking to completely eliminate PPO. Right. What we're trying to do is equalize what the cost is to the city for all employees. Right. Mm -hmm. That if you want the higher um, PPO price, then you're going to pay anything above what the EPO cost would be. We're not saying eliminate PPO. We're saying it's available to you. But if you want it, you're going to have to pay that difference. When does this change occur? When will they be September able? September one. And they'll be able to make the change to their health insurance. Yes, sir. In July, we have open enrollment. Yeah. The entire month, pretty much of July, mm -hmm. is open enrollment period. On July the eighteenth, we have a benefits fair. Mm -hmm. Let's put it that way, where we go to four different locations for several hours. We alert the employees in advance. Mm -hmm. We tell them who is going to be there mm -hmm. so that they can take a moment mm -hmm. out of their day and come and sit down and talk with those representatives. And my we certainly could have that information available. My concern them. is I work at a place, I get that email. That's very boring. I am not attending. <laughs> when I call my doctor, I get my service, and I'm not making it's the so change true. that well, I need I mean, to make because it's difficult to working, find inertia. If you're working for somebody and they say, hey, every my, where I work, they do, you have open enrollment. And, and if, if you don't take the time, that Read we're that paying book. you to go here and sit here for an hour oh, yeah. to talk about your insurance, and about the benefits for you and your family. I mean, that's not the city's fault. We're giving you the opportunity. We're going to tell you in advance. You know, you got a whole month to to to, to do it and look into it. And then we're giving you a day that we're going to come. We're going to come to you. I mean, I mean, I, I'm I mean, not unless saying, somebody calls out sick for work, you know, I mean, I'm not saying we shouldn't do it. Of course, but, you have to do it. However, as far as waiting for people to self-actuate and say, I'm going to make this choice because it makes... And let me charge the whole I guess so what I'm it, saying is so I don't have much I would faith. say this year, if we're making this change <laughs> and it's going to affect your, your paycheck, then those who have PPO now are going to have to sit down mm -hmm. and acknowledge right. the change. Right. I understand the change. I'm okay with paying this. Those that don't want to pay that, mm -hmm. 
can sit there. Okay, I want to switch over to EPO. So they're going to have to sit down and do it. Right. I look in let the book me, so to see if there's pictures of anybody I know. Let me see if I can if I can bring this to us because I saw nodding of heads when we're talking about going to the PPO and charging the and just give, matching what we we give for EPO. We have four. We have one knucklehead that has a philosophical problem with it, and I can live with that. So. Do we have four? Yeah, we do. It, it, would, it would, I don't know whether or not. I have one alternative. Can I take 30 seconds? <laughs> and can I take 30 seconds and formulate? Yeah. Open enrollment is June, <laughs> July. <laughs> <laughs> Example number one. <laughs> Open enrollment is July. July. Mm -hmm. Is there enough time between now and July? Is there enough people in this department to basically run through with everybody the benefits of staying on? EPO or coming back to EPO because I'm gonna be honest with you it, it's a little bit more expensive and because I'm single and the chances of not being are you know very slim um, I get the more expensive one because it's only a little bit more expensive and in your head you go well, I can go anywhere but if you can go anywhere now for 90% of the people that we have then we need to educate them if we could get that done by through July then I could support what we're doing here. The only question I do have is in paragraph number two, it, it says if we go to formulary number two, we save $58,000 and our members $2,000. My question is, and because I don't read the book, I'm assuming I'm reading this wrong, why is it that we still need to do 6% if we're gonna save $58,000 on changing the pharmacy list of drugs. That's just based on what's being used right now. $58,000. Let me ask my question, because I need an answer to the question, sure. which is if we save $58,000 by going to formulary number two, why would we still need to raise the rates 6% on our members? I mean, if that's $58,000 in savings, it's gonna go back to the consortium, isn't it? I, I, I keep pointing at you. I know. Point it's at you. money that would not be spent. It's uh, money that's yeah, all you know already been spent. It's these, on. It's this, it's these rules. With, uh, and we tell them to 8%. use less. We tell them we're going to reduce it. We tell them they're using it. And then we tell them it's got to go up 6%. And that's um, I, this, the way this is set up is designed to make it impossible for us not to raise it and for clear headed thinking, just it. it this, let me go back to paragraph number one then, because I'm trying to find a way to find the money for you not to have to raise it on them. These specialty drugs, if they go into formulary number two, let's say it's, this is the drug, give me your banana. This is the drug that costs so much. We find this one that isn't as much, we put that in formulary number two. How, how does that reduce that 73.2%? I'm telling you, you gotta get the person from Blue Cross Blue Shield to come. Mm -hmm. It's like watching a boxing match. Yeah, you do. It, it, and if that saves, if it's, it's costing our plan, the top five specialty drugs used on our plan cost our plan $425,000 a year. If this is formulary number two drug, it doesn't cost as much. How much does that reduce that 425? And can that be used to help our employees not have, or are you just sending it all back? It's, it's not being all sent back. To or, or sent, it, it's sent somewhere in the, in the big, in the big pot. That's why they skipped the meeting. Let so we know how much money, it. because sometimes if there's a lot in there, you can get reimbursements to general funds, to the county, the board of education, and to the city. Correct. But the, again, that's. It's not, it Never doesn't happens. actually go back to the general fund, to my knowledge, <laughs> it would. It goes into, what's that thing called? Uh, Restabilization fund. Oh my God, help me. Again, <laughs> if, I could, if, I could, if I could sell rate stabilization fund to our employees, that we've raised the cost, or we found a way to get cheaper drugs, but we're still raising them on you, 
I say, just like water and sewer, a larger discussion you might as well go about this particular set of rules that we're in. We save money and we still can't use that money to help our employees. Now that may be an oversimplification, but as I get older, that's the only way I can do it. Because, I mean, we're talking about $225,000. This is what we're talking about, right? We're talking about 175 and in a budget that is 60, 50 some million, and this is the place we're actually going, a budget that, that, that is that big. We're talking about raising water and sewer rates and raising rates on employees. I just, I find that to be, and nothing else across this budget has been taken out. Now granted, you couldn't use it over there. And that's, that's what I think is the thing that really, there's a roar that I won't use this early in the day to average citizens and average employees, that these rules make us have to take it from the least from the least with the ability to pay for it. it it's worth mentioning that the, um, the rate stabilization fund, last year we wrote a check for like 300000 So we did use some of our money to normalize those rates, to smooth, keep them smooth. Because self-insured means you know, we, we develop premiums and we can be conservative or ag uh, aggressive de de you know, depending uh, on our estimates. This year, we, 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 we had Care First fighting for 8%. We insisted on 6 so we're still using our funds. We're prepared to write another check for several hundred thousand because our rate stabilization fund is robust enough that it could handle it. <clears throat> so again, we set the premiums, but ultimately our cost of insurance is the, based on the claims, not, not having anything to do with the premiums. That's just how fast we fund the cost. So our actual expense is going to be the claims that then, a, then the and, and your question leads to a larger question, Keith. If, right. if it's based on claims, right? Did employee health work? Did employee health? Yeah. Work? Did did doing all the things that that we've done about employee health? Did well, it work? If the if it's the fund is robust, yeah. then it is obviously then I said work. Then I understand from a business perspective, you see the spreadsheet and how that works. But out there on the street. You got healthier, you've got a big surplus in your rate stabilization plan, but guess what? Your rates are going up again. And that makes no sense to people who don't have, uh, what's, what's, the, what's the thing Keith always uses this, and, and you know, Barbara Kane Thornton, the, you know, those yeah. national they rules of they people. They don't apply to, here though, actually. Uh, but it's still a set of rules that make, yeah. that are for accountants well, we're, we're, we're partly under the um, direction of Care First, and the, as you know, you, ne you negotiated with them. And, mm -hmm. Oh, yes. And, and we did the same thing. We, and Blue in the face. Jeannie did a, a great job of going from, they were looking at 10 to 12, and to get to 6, is, it was a home run, you know, as far as we were concerned. Uh, it was yeah, great. That but that's six. under the assumption that going up is okay. If you have in your rates, if you have a robust rate stabilization, well, which means the employees have saved. To my colleagues, I want to say, the employees mm -hmm. have reduced. And it's not just, I guess, do the other ones have robust? Does the county and the Board of Education okay. have robust? Well, I'm starting to regret that word. But uh, uh, <laughs> adequate, <Or us. laughs> adequate should, have been, uh, should, have been, should have been the word to describe it. But bottom line is, is that um, we felt that 10% uh, was too much, and uh, they insist that the trend in healthcare cost is rising rapidly it, 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 nationwide, and they're looking at their national trends, not just the city of Salisbury. And it's true, the last couple of months, our, our claims have exceeded our premiums. And so they're looking at that, and they're saying that uh, the 6% is necessary in order to uh, meet, meet the claims this year. Do right. you let me ask this question and I'm done because this is just it's that old familiar feeling is a discussion and a look at those claims necessary necessary in in this particular case because I would like to, I, I would be interested in knowing if the 73.2 percent increase in the specialty drugs came from singular people. 
because if I have to raise them, and I'm just going to use the analogy when I'm at the grocery store, I have no problem dumping this into the lap of Care, Cross, Care First Blue Cross Blue Shield. We got Obamacare, and, and uh, another seven, 18 million people in the country are covered. This was supposed to at least bring costs down, and it's not. And we're told a story by these insurance companies time after time after time after time again. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to request it, but I don't, if you all don't find it necessary to see it, that's fine with me. But I'm going to request it if we could. I'd like to see the pyramid with how many people are in the green, how many people are in the yellow, how many people are in the red. You know what I'm talking mm -hmm. about? You and I have been there with that nice lady so many times. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, you know, this is, this reminds me of uh, Ma Bell. <laughs> right. Exactly. I mean, let's face it. Yeah. And, and there's, there's really, they've got us, uh, yeah, yeah. Another one you can't say too dark. I won't use the engineering. I won't use the engineering term, but um, they've got us, you know. And and this is and, and I, I don't disagree with anything you're saying, Jim. But I think we're 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 left with this decision that we need to do something. Obviously, there's a recommendation that was brought to us, uh, essentially saying we can save some money. Um, there, the opportunity is there. And d despite personal philosophical differences, um, it seems like we have a consensus to to go forward with it, and that's fine. But I just want to take a vote so that we know that we're an uh, informal vote. Mir, are you okay with it? You okay? Oh, okay. Three. I'm okay with it. Jim? No, sir. Oh boy. I'm kind of sorted too because it's like you're getting less from did, did you want to introduce the alternative you could do you could do okay. half to give them some incentive to look at the differences? I wish we had time to do the education piece and see how many people would how many people would switch over? Switch over. I, I personally think mm -hmm. you're we're gonna be I mean my how guess many is at least are half really well are educated be. on this. It, it's that, it's exactly what it's exactly what Jeannie said, exactly what Allison said. Most people if you don't incentivize them to move, it's what you two said. Why, why move? Why move the dial if I don't have to reflect it? But if you're going to charge me money, then maybe I need to have a serious conversation. Some people may say, well, the cost savings is this, and if I can see my list of my doctors and people I go to are on this list, I'm going to save 100 bucks a month or whatever. I'm going to go with that. It's what's the value of that in case something rare happened that I would be covered by... This other thing, whether it's international travel or some rare thing that pops up, but those are one tenth of one percent. It's so few. What I did personally is I was like, I can't switch over because I had it for eleven years at PPL, and I went through and I punched in every single one of our doctors we see. It's like they're on there, they're on there, they're on there, they're on there. It's like all right, well, specialist after specialist after specialist. And I'm like, well, why am I paying more money? But I had to get to that process because I want to save the time. So I think I think it's an education piece, yeah, but if you is. don't. You can educate people, but if they don't really care, yeah, I don't know and, how to force it. And it's not it. even that they don't care; it's that some of them do not understand. Yeah, mm -hmm. I don't. I mean, the it understanding time, it, takes time, it takes time to explain well, because a lot to, of people are to not the, aware. To that point, that so you have to educate them. They do understand money. Well, they do That's understand the money. Yeah. So you to root, but the they're not understanding point, the terms. I, I hear what you're saying now. It's now, convoluted. No, I, There's I, an external company that's under a growth model, and we have yeah. to show as a consumer that you aren't going to keep your thumb on us. And if we make this move, we begin. We're one small entity <laughs> one amongst small the step several from that you've, are saying. You've convinced me. <laughs> <laughs> no, seriously. Yeah. The, so the let me ask you this: the yeah, discussion makes people. sense based on that. Yeah, it does. The, the discussion. I'm not. I wasn't comfortable with the, mm -hmm. the, the the concept, but that makes sense to me because it, essentially we're not cutting their right. We're not cutting their service. So is the we hope that, that so, if they take the EPO and said the PPO, it negates the six percent increase? No. Well, I mean it'll be less yeah. out of it'll their be, paycheck, be, right. the but PPS, the in, yes. but the increase in the EPO, which is six percent. Would that balance out? We've, we've done that as a group before in years past, trying to balance out the increase with a decrease. But if they went to the EPO... I think they'd still see savings because the difference between EPO and PPO, maybe 20, 25%. It's, it's a lot larger of a jump. It's not six... It's much more than six percent. 
probably yeah. Right. And when you so weigh it out, you're looking you're looking at seeing you still say because yeah. you're not yeah. paying as much for your doctor's care. You're not paying as much for your hospitalization. I know what you're saying. He wants to to use the savings six percent for those who remained in the EPO who have been there. He wants to show them some savings as well. Can we do that? Okay, Gene. <laughs> no, it doesn't sound more like we're playing roulette with what you yeah, used don't to do. Yeah, I don't yeah. think we belong making those decisions mm -hmm. for people. Yeah. That six percent is based on what our experience rating has been so far this year. What they project next year's needs are going to be. Mm. Have they done that? They did, and they mm. came back with ten to twelve percent. Yeah, and we just said yeah. absolutely yeah. not. We yeah. understand yeah. things are in double digit, but we're not prepared mm. to be there. <laughs> okay. Mm. Jim, do you stay you still say no? I could say yes if we we got a detailed plan as to how we're going to get these each one of these employees in. Great. To say you can do that. Okay. And I'd be willing to help with that. We're good because it wouldn't we're hurt me to read my book either. <laughs> and mine is the same book. We're I mean, good. through the Board of Education, it's the same book. We're not even reading the book. It's the education. Yeah. Okay. We got. Let's. That's good. Uh, we need a ten-minute. Bio break. <laughs> uh, next up on the, uh, there's two things on from the police: uh, the Safe Streets grant and the grant match. Well, I can talk about grant match if you want. I'm not the police, but I came up with it. <laughs> well, you can talk about the police, but we're not going to listen. Okay. <laughs> uh, personally, Go ahead. I think that they should all have water guns. <laughs> no. um, oh uh, Keith, would you mind pulling up the grant match? Where are we? Let's give me a second here. We're good. Come on. Get in. Oh. So um, I'll start with the COPS grant because that's yep. uh, the largest amount. So the, the way that the COPS uh, agreement is written is we have to increase our share of the total amount each year. So we had proposed that we would pay for 30% the first year, 33% the second year, and 37% the third year. Um, however, because uh, of the requirement that we <coughs> hire only veterans, with that money, uh, SPD has only been able to hire one person thus far out of the two. So originally last year when we budgeted um, our match, we assumed that we'd be hiring two and therefore budgeted 31000 So um, with a kind of maximum liability for next year, which would be that we hire a second person starting July 1 and finishing out this year um, and everything else, even though our share of the amount that we're paying for the officers is increasing, our total amount actually decreases to uh, that approximately 33,000. Okay. Um, for drug court, um, which is through the uh, circuit court, um, uh, gun violence reduction initiative, which is I believe a federal program that passes through the state, and then marshals, which is directly from the US Marshal Service. We only pay the FICA, um, because it's all for overtime pay, so there's no retirement or life insurance attached to it. Um, and the reason we do that is that enables us to uh, expend more of the funds for actual overtime, which obviously looks better. Um, the uh, Keith can talk about the protective vests. Um, we just uh, needed, we didn't need that in there. It's pretty much what it comes down to because of the way the funds were requested um, by Colonel. Um, and then uh, the safe streets, uh, if, if you want to go to that tab. So under the application that Colonel just submitted yesterday, I believe I got the email, um, the safe streets is actually changing to, uh, forgive me if I'm butchering the name, but I believe it's Maryland Crime Intelligence Analyst Network thing. Um, it's probably in there. 
and the proposal that was included was to uh, reduce the overall pay of the Safe Streets coordinator. It's just a reduction of about $8,000. Um, and instead uh, hire a crime, crime data analyst specialist. Um, so the, the way that Safe Streets was originally created is it was um, an evolution of, uh, uh, I can't, C-Safe, um, which was kind of a community engagement sort of quasi looking at violent felon sort of thing. And over time, Safe Streets has really just turned mainly into a crime data um, program looking at our region's most violent offenders or those that are most likely to offend. Um, so with that change in kind of the overall mission according to the state, um, they decided to just kind of rename and rebrand and, and change the program um, to really be focusing more on, on what it's actually doing, which is trying to get our most violent um, uh, criminals uh, either off the streets or if they are you know, here to ensure that they aren't committing new crimes. Um, so with that um, kind of idea, the uh, SPD, and I believe the mayor was involved in that as well, uh, decided that you know, an additional analyst would be really helpful um, to really ensure that we have a robust program going forward. So with that, um, we, being the city, would have paid for approximately 70% of the uh, fringe. So uh, assuming uh, maximum FY19 PPO family benefits. Um, <laughs> PPO. Yeah, uh, I think we should probably change it after this morning. <laughs> okay, whatever the, <laughs> whatever the CPO <laughs> benefits are, um, is uh, approximately 30,000 for that. So all told, um, fringe is about 44, so 70% of that's 30,000. Um, is that the same, is that what it was, what, what it's been? Uh, the, the match? Yeah. No, because it, it's been less than that for two reasons. First of all, there wasn't the second position. And second of all, Christine only had um, a single. She, she didn't have family. Okay. Um, Got you. I want to point out here that if you go back to sheet one, um, that Keith had estimated that we would probably need to increase our amount by 15000 and I did all those calculations, and it turns out Keith was almost exactly right. Um, <laughs> just based on his <laughs> surprise, so, surprise. So, yeah, so that, that took me like half a day, and Keith was <laughs> Yeah, and, and I was 30 seconds. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and I, I, was, I was off by like 2,000 bucks. Um, so, yeah, so the, the mayor level adjustment, or council level adjustment, is uh, 16,726. Um, And the way I want to add one last thing, the way that we've handled grant match is that it sits in a transfer account within the general fund. So if, uh, for whatever reason, SPD should not receive that second position as part of the Safe Streets um, or whatever it is, criminal analyst network thing now, um, that money would just sit in that uh, account and then just roll over um, or you know go back into surplus. Am I right? Okay. Um, I, was, I wasn't. What money was rolls over? I heard. I caught the tail end of that. Oh, statement. just so that. If can you say the part again about where I was right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 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 and louder. Yeah. 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 Um, if right. SPD does not get that second position, we'll not be moving that money, and then that move, money will be going back into surplus. Well, usually, if we have a, tr a grant match, uh, we, we'll go ahead and transfer the full amount of mm -hmm. the grant match into the um, grant fund, and then it right. resides there. So, uh, okay. Well, well, then I'm completely wrong. Well, again, um, I can see an argument for and against. I can see if we didn't. But since it was an appropriation, we send it there, and if as long as it's used for that purpose, right. for that uh, the pur stated purpose, it would be okay. Otherwise, we had to do a transfer. Yeah. I, otherwise, if we could not use it, we would transfer it back okay. sometime. But yeah. but it would roll over if uh, if if we wanted to, so okay. to speak. But it's it's worth noting that in previous years, it, this came with a, I think sometimes a commitment, so that you didn't make a decision for thirty thousand for that one year. It might be. You have a four-year commitment or a three-year commitment, so you really you were committing to $150,000, let's say, if it was five years. But this is 
there is no um, multi-year commitment. It's mm -hmm. a it's no. a, an annual commitment. No. But <clears throat> so that's I mean. Yeah, and I think part of that was because of the employee trying to ensure that we retain that employee who was Christine. When they yeah they were yeah. making it uh, more likely that we would do that. Right. So the employee is an analyst. There's two employees. Uh -huh. One. Uh, so right now the position's vacant um, okay. because Christine left. Um, but the, the proposed positions is a Safe Streets coordinator, so they would be doing, um, kind of, Christine previously was, was combining two different positions, so she was doing Safe Streets coordinating, um, <clears throat> which is kind of preparing everything for the, uh, for her portion of ComSat, um, actually, can you talk about it, because you so, already saw her. <laughs> so, Christine, Christine was actually fulfilling, she was doing a lot of, uh, tracking on uh, the Safe Street vendors and keeping track of whether or not they were in jail, arrested, mm -hmm. um, you know, where they were uh, popping up on police calls. Um, and she, as well as she coordinated like all the uh, law enforcement meetings state, with the state's attorney's office. So I mean, she's, it's a wide, wide ranging uh, uh, group that you have to reach out to. Fruitland, MSP, Del Mar, um, Sheriff's Department, SPD, State's Attorney's Office, <coughs> Parole and Probation, the U.S. Marshals, everybody, you know, ends up being a part of this group with the Safe Streets. And that coordinator keeps all that information and stuff flowing. Christine was also reaching out and actually going to other Safe Street meetings up mm -hmm. in like Cambridge and stuff, mm -hmm. and then coming back. So, I mean, she was, she was extremely busy with that. Position. Yeah, she used to have community meetings also. Mm -hmm. Yeah, safe streets. Yeah. yeah, and the yeah, and, and she was trying to um, maintain the community too. meetings, but the turnout on the community meetings yeah, was not. Was We're calling it safe streets, but it's currently not called safe streets. It, it's it's about to change. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. So, it's going to change. So and it's an analyst position. So it's, are, it's two positions. Two analyst positions. No, uh, coordinator. Well, really? coordinator and an analyst. Right. Yeah. She was doing she both. She was doing both jobs. And what the coordinator was doing was coordinating the efforts of law enforcement to track individuals that have engaged in criminal behavior yes. in the past. And she was doing So it was primarily on the prosecutor prosecutorial side. Or the know, preventative side. Yeah. Preventative yeah. side. Investigation and preventative, yeah. <laughs> it was on the preventative side. It's, 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 so it's not a rehabilitative effort. We are no, actually, it, it certainly could be considered that. Because what you're doing is also trying to, through Predpol and Comstat and all the rest of it, you're predicting. It's a predictive. It's a predictive model that if this person, knowing what we know from all of the different analysts in the room, mm -hmm. not you, Hardy, but this person, given the situation, has a very high predict, very high predictor of either committing a crime again or somebody coming after that person. Many a murder in this city has been stopped because we have pulled people off the street mm -hmm. knowing that other people were coming for them. And that's what that discussion with the marshals, our discussion with Delaware, our discussion with counties to the north, our discussion with uh, parole and probation officers throughout the country about what happens when people get out, where are they going. The other part of it was also a reentry issue mm -hmm. as well, helping people get back into and, not, and helping them not make the same mistakes again. Also, through conflict resolution, helping people figure out how to deal with their families for the first time in several years mm -hmm. and the pressures that come along with that. My question is, do we already have an analyst doing ComStat and PredPol or whatever we're calling it now because that changes every six months? And is this, this position here, the second one, does that put another officer out on the street or are there two people now looking at data or would there be two people? Well, it wouldn't be, um, it wouldn't put another officer out on the street because it's, these are all civilian roles. Mm -hmm. um, but, um, but it would potentially, um, I mean, the, the question is what is the state offering and one of the things they're offering is that you can have an, an, an analysis task and a coordination task. Um, now, you could accomplish, try to accomplish that with one person or you could accomplish that with two people. Um, simultaneously, you know, we are, I think we're increasing the amount of, we have been increasing the amount of workload that the analysts are expected to do um, in PD in the last year or so. Um, um, Kendall's workload is increasing. Um, you know, she's physically moved into uh, GIS 
team space, and she's over there now. Um, so they're they're they have more on their plate. Um, this is a the program's going to change, so it's it tough is. to it's tough to know. It's changing. I don't think the state hundred percent knows what it's paying for. You know, I think they, you know, they're they're sort of changing strategy midstream, and that's what they do, and they rename it, and it's a new governor and a new governor's program, and mm -hmm. I want to call it my thing now. I don't want to call it the last guy's thing. That's sort of. Um, so I, it's tough to say. Um, and I, I think the question is, uh, you know, could two people accomplish more um, from from an analysis and planning and coordination standpoint? Um, the other thing is, this is more focused on a smaller number of uh, problem individuals than Safe Streets has been historically. Safe Streets is I don't lose. Top 25, you know, long, longer yeah, list. Yeah, we, we, it's a much longer at list. At one point, we had a very long list. and Well, it's um, good that the list is getting smaller. It's yeah, more focused. I mean, yeah. right. It's the highest risk. Mm -hmm. I just think there's, because $44,000 is up there where a police officer starts, maybe even a little less than what a police officer starts at. So, I mean, this is grant money. I mean, yeah. so the tinkering with it is... I just would hope that if we, if using the matrix that I know, Mr. Mayor, you have set up for them, because that's how, that's how you do this. You do this with the matrix, and this is what I want done, this, these are the results I want to see. If, if that person is doing it with one and we can do more with two, then I would say, say that to you. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, I think, well, I'm hopeful that, right. that no matter what the state's expectations are, okay. you know, what we saw with Christine, I think, is that you can get a lot out of these people, you know, the mm -hmm. person you put in the job, regardless of what the state's expectations are. So the state's going to make us report on X, Y, and Z. The state's going to try to force a model, right? But I think we can always make it our own. Um, and with um, another person who can do the data analysis and do the information analysis, because um, you have to remember these are these are people who go through the full background, everything, so that they have access to all the information they need. They know everything. You know, they can have access to all data and information about, um, you know, uh, suspects and, um, you know. And they implemented two uh, nice programs through Safe Streets, which was Salisbury Transitioning Offenders Program. Mm -hmm. That was a really great program, and it only they only did it one time, and it was really great. And then they had the Quiet Summer for the for the youth. Quiet summer. Yeah, that was really good, and I, I, I've talked to the chief a couple of times about even bringing those two programs back because I even had one of the offenders who's willing to come back that was on that program to help with other um, transitional offenders. So I think, we again, we can make it our own. Yeah. You know, so with, with more resources, we can do more. And if we can afford it, then that's, I, think it's, I think it's a worthy yeah. conversation. The programs. Okay. I'm skeptical because I really don't understand what we're paying for at this point. We're paying for state money. Thanks. We're paying for the help benefits. So we're not paying for anything. Yeah. There's going to be a city map. Mm -hmm. There's, there's got to be an element well, that we're paying, paying for. There's nothing we're, we're paying, paying for. No, we're, we're, paying paying about we're paying 30. Yeah. We're paying 30? Yeah. Yeah. So, so the question the question is, your, well, your question important. about, and your skepticism is about an, a relatively poorly defined state. Well, and what you're saying is the state sets a floor, but we can... Determine what we do beyond that. Yeah, and I think yeah, and I think yeah. we'd have to because they're, you know, this. Our our safe streets coordinator in that program in Wycombe County has always been used as like a a model for the rest of the state anyway. Mm -hmm. so we've always been at the top, the leading, cutting edge of that. So I mean, as far as prosecutions, our our you know tracking list to. Uh, Way we, we pull everybody in to do our group meetings. Um, so they're like Cambridge. Uh, when uh, Christine went up there, she was actually helping them, you know, coordinate theirs and, and build their program as well. So I mean, it's, it's got far-reaching uh, uh, consequences. I know you're thinking Cambridge is not our business, but no, I'm not. I mean, but Cambridge, Cambridge offenders are also Salisbury it's offenders, and we're seeing. I, 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 I get that. I get that. I deal with the offenders. Um, some of them. Some of them. Um, I don't know. I just still, 
I don't have a tangible sense of what they're doing. And, you know, that might just be a, a separate conversation. I but think it would be a good idea. If it's costing Council less... Council members are invited to a meeting. Yeah. 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 Let's yeah. go to a meeting. You'll, you'll love it. I, I did. I really loved it. Mm-hmm. I think we, we need to start setting those up again. We, yes. We need the, the staff that are in place to do that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But, but those meetings, um, when they were well attended, uh-huh. you know, it was, a, it was a good community safety conversation yeah. discussion in general. Um, good data... Uh, discussion as well uh, mm-hmm. about trends, um, but, I, but I think the pot- the potential too. You, you know, mentioning Operation Quiet Summer, and the potential is that we can go way beyond, yeah. you know, just sort of the conversations, and we can develop, you know, new See, tools. Where some that, saw where it, it failed, I saw where it was a success, because the three offenders never didn't came back. They didn't reoffend. <laughs> Matter of fact, one of them moved away. It. it is a Christian and doing all kind of outreach programs. And there was another young lady who was, um, she dropped out of college. Now she's back in college and doing very well. The other young lady, we haven't heard from her since. So, you know, from tracking, it's, it's really been a success. I don't know whether she's back out there again or not, but we haven't heard of her reoccurring, uh, reoccurring crimes that she's committed. So, I, and you know, an offending, drug offending and stuff like that. So. I thought it was a success, and I thought it should have gone, gone on further, because just helping three people at a time is, is a success to me. You know. So there's and changing there's lives. Two, two things that happened. You know, one, you know, uh, Christine moved. Yeah. Um, yeah. Two, two um, we saw the writing on the wall about the program changing and going away maybe two years ago. Mm-hmm. You know, because as soon as Governor Hogan came in. Basically, the assumption was every every year Colonel Meinstein came in and was like, "Well, we're not going to have that grant anymore because right. that's not going to exist." And it did, except the state office cops, you know, I mean, uh, or governor's office of crime control and convention, you know, just started sloughing off staff. You know, it was just shrunk, 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 and you know, nothing was coming out of it. There was no guidance. There was no direction. Yeah. It was like, yeah, yeah, yeah here's the here's money, money still, but. You know, there's no state uh-huh. strategy. There's no straight coordination. So I think the potential now is that okay, there's there's a new plan, at least a new title. You know, uh, or you call it something else. Start sending the money downrange. You know, start yeah. sending the money out to the communities. And, yeah. Uh, last thing I'd like to add is that uh, the grant total grant amount is like three hundred thousand mm-hmm. dollars. So we're only putting out like ten percent of the total amount. It's is the chief comfortable that thirty-two thousand dollars will buy somebody who can handle all that? I mean, I, I'm I'm not. I know. I was in it. I was there when it all started, and I, it's a lot of work. we found somebody who really. Put them, but we got very, very, very lucky after interviewing how many people. I just you know. And stick around though. And you, stick you, around. You'll get something for a year. I know. It's a stepping stone at that. I'd like to note that as difficult as that job, or as difficult as I make Christine's uh, <laughs> life, she still does not want to go back to that job. So that really tells you something about the workload. Right. Because she is sick and tired of about hearing about Balkan war criminals. So. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay. Any other questions? What do you need us to do? <laughs> Are we just approving the thirty thousand dollars to go along with it yeah. if it comes our way? Yeah, yeah. yeah. sixteen thousand dollars. I'm sorry. It's the difference is sixteen. Yeah. The adjustment would be thirty. The the decision to to support this grant would be thirty. So you have to pay thirty to get ninety. You can see it. The the, the, the total okay. program is one hundred twenty one. Yeah. We can't we can't get to ninety unless we put in our thirty. Mm-hmm. I just okay. ignored you anyway. So what? Sixteen. I'm just gonna say that. What what Keith's doing, by the way, behind the scenes is he's keeping track of all so that we can see what the net effect is and on everything at the end. We'll just go through and see where we are. Yeah. Hopefully, it'll be blue letters or black letters and not red letters. Not red letters. <laughs> or ones in parentheses. No. Or ones in parentheses. I'm not sure what that means. I'd like to know for the entire time we're talking about this, Keith okay, completely okay. reformatted that document. <laughs> That's really nice. I know. <laughs> That's why sometimes you can't answer the question yeah, the first exactly. time. <laughs> All right. All right. What's next? Uh, let's see. So we have approval for the thirty. Yeah. 
Well, at least we have an issue with the agreement. We may have to come back to it when like, we see, when we see the big final issue. number. Right, I just wanted to know whether to put it in or not. Yeah, put it in. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, so, Mayor, I have, I have the uh, adjustment down here for the other. I know you saw me put the 30 in. They were just separated. Oh, okay. Because this, this was kind of just truing it up. Sure. And this was a decision today whether we were going to uh, support that program. Gotcha. Yes. But the, net, the net's in there. Okay. we have anything else for uh, on this? Go ahead. Well, what's next? What order uh, do you want to go? Well, what's we next? have them here. If we could jump to the youth specialists. Fine. Yeah. Okay. Youth specialists. Uh, Keith, I'd put the amounts. I think the actual amounts might, might might be under the homeless folder, but the job description then they're just HCDD. Where you want me to? Where you want me to go first? Uh, just go to Department HCDD. Okay. Um, and I guess let's just start with the job. I guess uh, the, this guy, Mr. President. Uh, would you prefer job description first or numbers first? Uh, just a, you can just do a quick summary. All right. Uh, so the job description is, uh, <clears throat> unfortunately, we didn't receive any uh, return bids from the uh, New Newton Street Community Center, um, or we did, but they wanted absurd amounts of money. Um, so there's a couple different models that we can take with that. You made it smaller. You can't keep doing that for us. Yeah, we're old. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. There you go. There's a couple different models that we could go with it. Um, one would be to try to put together a team ourselves. Um, another would be uh, Amber's been doing a lot of great work with trying to uh, get different vendors in on weekends um, for sorry for the Truett Street Community Center. So in other words, we would kind of be managing the calendar internally. Um, so that that's kind of a model that we could take with Newton Street is that we. Uh, you know, with, with, with proper staff support, um, uh, don't, uh, you know, again, do not do any programming. We're, we're not going to be responsible for programming of any kind. But with the combination of the work that Ember has been doing thus far and um, the Newton Street Community Center coming online, in addition with Truett Street, um, we'd be able to provide the necessary support uh, for. Uh, Sorry, Colonel Watkins. Um, for the community center. Sorry. Um, do you want to switch back to Colonel? Okay. Um, so uh, Amber uh, was was able to put together a, a kind of a look at what she's been doing thus far. Um, so some of the projects that she's worked on, um, she put together a town hall, youth-led town hall. Um, that uh, I believe Andy attended. Um, <clears throat> I think there were around like 10 kids there um, that uh, worked to identify a number of different problems and, and possible solutions. Um, she did, a, she's done a lot on social media, um, so she's increased the Facebook page for the YDAC up to 271 likes. Um, she did a couple of Twitter town halls um, looking at issues such as LGBTQ youth, adulting, and youth of crime. Um, I would say uh, pr probably one of her most popular activities has been the school bus stop pop-ups. Um, she's done a total of six, three in the fall, um, or I think she's done a total of four or five, and she did three in the fall, one in the spring, and then she's got a couple more coming up. Um, Theo, can I stop you for a yeah, minute? Yeah, sure. One thing that always concerns me when we talk about position mm -hmm. is that we don't create the position based on the person. Right. We right. base the position on the need. Right. Yeah. So, so is it okay if I share that? Yeah. All right. So, so Amber is actually going to be leaving. Um, she is taking a uh, job with a local radio station to be one of their co-hosts. So what you're, what you're indicating when you're reading is what the expectations are yes. for whoever yes. that position yes. is. Yes. Now, so I'm, the, this now is, I'm more comfortable. But not for programming at either one of the centers. It's just all no. these things no. that your staff has been handling. Of course, yes. Yes. Of the people yes. programming, but just not actual. At least our, our opinion has been that us running it's youth programming yeah. as a city government that has not done that historically. We don't want Let's let 
let you know experts engage with and we've found willing partners so far so let's okay. let the people who do it do it and there's all sorts of things that come along with you know watching kids and you know and running programming for kids yeah let's let the experts do that and just in general local governments don't do well with that <laughs> i mean like i mean if, if you look at the other models like baltimore city for instance they don't their lmd does a lot of programming of that they don't um, so uh, a lot of what we heard in terms of you know the vendors that are interested in being part of the Newton Street Community Center. When you, um, I'm sorry, but when you say a vendor, you obviously have put out some sort of RFP for yes. providing of services yes. for these. Mm -hmm. Okay, can you so, delve into that? Uh, is, is that okay? Yeah. yeah oh, okay. Um, so uh, unfortunately, we did not receive any. Uh, we received one proposal for that solicitation, and it was from a group based out of Baltimore that uh, that was requesting two hundred and twenty-five thousand dollars to run the programming. And I dug into their nine nineties, and they looked to be a bit of a sham because their director is making one hundred twenty thousand dollars a year, working twenty hours a week. Um, so, but they. Yeah. So the archdiocese. But they replied. Is, well, hold on a second. But they replied to your RFP. Yes. So can you talk about the RFP? Okay. So sorry. That, really that'll be need helpful. To know the personal history um, of the person here. Yeah. yeah. Let me put that in context. I mean, that, that was how we originally said we would run all programming for the uh, community centers would be through uh, services provided by nonprofit or community entities through an RFP, selected through an RFP. Uh, rather than the city try to run those programming. Um, and what we found with Truett Street, for example, is rather than an RFP, um, we did a, a sort of a low-key, hey, who wants to, you know, mm -hmm. who's out there? That, uh, and there were two entities that were already operating in the neighborhood that had lost their home, um, you know, and so we signed agreements with them to let and them operate. And they're, they're already now. They're yep. doing great work. Um, and then, uh, and then there's a third entity working on an agreement with us now. And then it's open for anybody to rent in the hours that nobody's using it. Um, so with Newt Street, we just did a more formal process um, because you know it was actually the Youth Development Advisory Council recommended a more formal process. Um, and uh, the, the uh, I guess the process has resulted in but our our expectations were high. And tailored not to necessarily anyone out there that exists <laughs> that, that we know of, but you know, looking for something similar to what um, Epoch or Fruitland Community Center or one of those entities, you know, has done. Um, so we might need to dial that back. Well, my my question to Theo is: is even though Baltimore City has their what is it? You said O and B office, does yeah, it? Yeah, L and B. Um, but they still pay for it. The city still pays for it. Yeah, I mean, they they use. They do, um, so it's yeah. it's a it's state and city money. I don't know how much is state money or not mm -hmm. much is city money. Um, a lot of what I heard from the vendors that, that were interested in applying is it wasn't necessarily that they didn't want to do the programming or that they didn't have the capacity of the programming. It was, it was kind of more the site management component of it and the calendar component, and they, they really got more, uh, I don't know if concerned is the right word, when it comes to you know us putting the responsibility of engaging with outside people to use the space. Um, so is it, they were looking more like a kids club situation where it's already in an established building that already has the electric tape, that already has, everyone's out of it because it's after school. Yep. And that's not what we have. Well, no, we, we are paying for the electricity. No, and, I, I don't mean, yeah. yeah, oh, I'm okay. saying that what we don't have is an established that this is open from this time to this time. Mm -hmm. And they don't want to do that stuff. They want to come in and do the programming. They just don't want to manage. Mm -hmm. yep. They don't right. want to say Everett's there from 8 to 5 or right. Everett's in charge of something happens with yeah. the lighting. Was, we're looking for the tenant resident who then, gotcha. when they were not running programming, who then fills up that calendar, who right. then mm -hmm. manages that space. And that's what this position right. potentially. How much is? Them. I'm sorry, did I miss it? How much is the youth development director? Uh, no, I mean you didn't miss it because we, we didn't get it. We we just did the. Oh, that's right. That's the, the other job one. Okay. Yeah. So uh, so the the before we switch to the money, uh, the thing that I wanted to point out here is is I also put in the youth civics council. So currently the the city has uh, one and a half AmeriCorps volunteers. Um, so the full time person Amber Green. Um, she's been doing all of the youth development stuff and like the stuff that I was talking about in terms of the town hall and the bus stop, pop-ups, the uh, on the table, on the table 
Uh, we were working on an AmeriCorps affiliate grant uh, and uh, the neighborhood community walks and all that kind of stuff. Then there's also the Youth Service Council, um, which unfortunately has been a turnover in coordinator, so there's been a little bit of a lapse in that. Um, but to, to save money, if we were to go this direction, um, one, one recommendation that, the, that I would suggest um, is that we actually eliminate both AmeriCorps positions and combine those duties into this specialist position. Um, and that, that would save us money. Um, not, not eliminate the green person, um, green, team. green team person, but uh, but because it costs about $8,600 $8, for a full-time AmeriCorps person. Um, and so they would also be doing Youth Civics Council um, and then management of, uh, of the community centers, YDAC, um, summer youth work program, um, in terms of recruitment and the application process, uh, then uh, youth SPD stuff, uh, Chief's been interested in this uh, Teen Brain ac Academy or that Baltimore City put together that we've been looking for grant funding for. Um, and, and those sort of things. So Theo, you're saying some of the position potentially would be subsidized through grant funding? Oh, no, sorry. Well, I mean, it could potentially. Um, we, we haven't been actively looking into that. It could potentially. Okay. But, uh, but part of the position could also be subsidized by the elimination of the AmeriCorps position. Okay. What are the requirements? Uh, so we, we kept it fairly... Uh, open um, because, you know, we want to... Do high school degree or equivalent and maybe some experience with well, I, I put associates. Associates, or, okay. Associates, mm -hmm. bachelor's, bachelor's preferred. preferred. Um, because we, we want them to have some type of okay. higher ed. And how much are we looking at? Spending? So the... Um, high 30s, maybe? The, the position was uh, 30,000. 30, yeah, if you go to any of those, they should all be there. Um, if you go to position breakdowns all the way over to the right, um, and then it's that one all the way over to the right. Um, 30. 30, 3251. Um, the, the two options are to have it where, what, what am I doing? 32,000? No, 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 sorry, 30, sorry. 30,251. Yeah, sorry. 30,251. For is that job for the job description we just looked at? Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> Do you think that's too high? I mean, we're. I think. Uh, well, I, I'll just keep quiet. Now. Well, I mean, that, <laughs> so that that's just a suggestion. I mean, we're we're not. Uh, we can. I mean, has Jeannie validated that? No, not yet. We haven't had. My guess is I if she does. Would, I guess is if she does, it doesn't go up. Seriously? Yeah. I, I, I could see yeah, working position. with you. That's 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 substantial. That's, I mean, that's about what. That's substantial because okay. I'm saying working with you is not. A, I'm not saying any one of us would want to take you know that job necessarily, but that's you know. Okay. I mean, we we could make it a bachelor's position, and that that would make it go up. But uh, I mean, that that's we'd have to justify why. You know, would why? Require a bachelor's exactly. Yeah. Um, so the. The, the two options in terms of payment would be uh, do, it, do it that total amount with benefits. Um, and, and that benefits calculation is low um, because I, I did, uh, I guess, EPO now. Uh, EPO, <laughs> whatever it is. Jim PO. Uh, whatever you want to call it. Uh, keep like that one. Um, <laughs> I think we all do. We'll call them mutant employees. <laughs> I'll be sitting at my table for the yeah, meeting. Exactly. <laughs> uh, for for the the single, uh, because uh, you know, again, we we were talking about a specific individual. Um, so potentially with benefits that could go up another about ten thousand, right? Just about sixteen thousand is the high amount. And, if I'm remembering that correctly. And then a lot of the option would be no benefits, so it would just be FICA and salary. So we'd be looking at 32800 How do you do it, no benefits? You make it part-time? Uh, you make it contractual. Make it contractual? Year to year. I, th I think you could get a college student to do it for us. Uh -huh. You won't get as good work. Well, and, and I think, and I don't know whether or not this is the time or place for it, but that job description is entirely entirely too much. You've got yeah. them going over several different departments 
and, and, I, and I love you all, but I can see all the stuff that a bunch of you have done over the last couple of years that has been like, all right, we got to do that. All getting lumped into this one thing you want somebody else to do. <laughs> it's a catch-all. It's, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I don't want. I, I don't want to do you civic for. I don't want to do the convention for children, or I don't want to. You know what I mean? I don't want. I don't want to do the summer program. Here you it's go. Like, I can see something that you've done. You've done. Whatever we don't all want. All in one. <laughs> but well, I don't know whether or not that's that's what, that's I would the, suggest that we take what's the goal of the centers, and if the centers are your goal. I mean, I then, can see then person being that, there yeah, at the two so centers you would have, for that employee. Well, I mean, I, I appreciate you wanted to coordinate the youth summer stuff. program, but that's in public works, and that's with Jeannie. If you want these centers open and kids in them. So if I can address the, the summer program. Well, I'm not here to debate you. I'm saying but that. That's the whole reason I come to council. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, just, uh, Jeannie is, the only thing that we've been doing with the Youth Civics Council is just the recruitment and application and all that stuff. We've actually already been doing that, and, uh, and now Jeannie's taking over the hiring and everything else, and she's, she's full seam ahead. I remember we did it for 8,000. You know what I'm saying? 8,000. Yeah, I mean, she, she, did, is, she, did all she is leaving for another job. Yeah, so. but I'm just saying, she did this for a little yeah. Way less than this. She did a lot of stuff. The, yes. the only piece that she didn't do is any sort of um, programmatic supervision or management yeah. of a facility, yeah. which yeah. requires a, a good bit of time. Um, Were you here last? Last oh, so is this something that we need for the new community centers that we're bringing online? We'll need some sort of operational, some sort of yeah. Whether it's whether it's total just paying an entity to to just do it, and you know we're hands off other than the operation and maintenance of the, of the structure, um, or if it's um, you know an internal person who coordinates you know activities with the organization. Which you know, tr Truett is operating without any person being there, and it's doing fine. Mm -hmm. We don't we don't supervise anything in terms of activities. Newton, we could try that. I just you know suspect we're going to need to be a little. I, I would I so would highly time to use. The, I'm sorry. No, you got at this time to use the facilities. I would have to say I have this activity that I'm willing to coordinate, and the facility is there for me to do that. I'm comfortable with that model at this time. And, and it's, just and to be clear. Um, meaning the, the existing building, the Truett Street. Yeah, so Newton's yeah. not online yet. But it won't be, in, but it will be in this fiscal year. Mm -hmm. so it will be in September. Oh. Oh. So to, 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 did anybody or, from the advisory committee give you any ideas on how to pay for this? Or was this just simply, oh yeah. Oh, city, you can do that, right? Yeah. It's, it's okay. Yeah. I, I just want to. I always get on the wrong ones. <laughs> if, if this is not looked at as something that is, is interested in funding, um, I, I would so highly recommend that through AmeriCorps or some sort of part-time entity, continue with some of the initiatives that Amber was doing. I think we doing. two AmeriCorps people or a, a position, which is already currently in the in the mayor's budget, and this was. Potentially an additive, but kind of that oversight, if to continue on that operation, it's either going to fall to Theo or to somebody in HCDD or somebody in the mayor to have to try to put all those pieces together. So, the way we're operating right now, it doesn't leave room for growth or full investment into these activities. Um, but we're getting by with kind of the mayor position. Can I have one last thing? Between the mayor, uh, I'm just talking about the last thing. They have got it at the eighty-six. That's eighty-six. Thirty-two seven. Yeah, that's the additional cost. Thirty-two seven. The yes, yeah, the additional is thirty-two seven. The with regards to Truett, um, you know, one of the things that Amber had been looking into was uh, operating things on Saturdays. Um, but that that's something that Amber was going to be doing herself. She was going to change her hours and be reaching out to individual vendors, or whatever you want to call them, community groups, um, and they would uh, apply through uh, the application that Andy put together. Um, 
But in order to do that, someone would have to be there to physically lock and unlock and supervise and all that kind of stuff. So right now, Truett Street is only operating from 3 until, what? 8.30. 8.30. Um, so, you know, it's... And I'm not saying that we aren't getting our money's worth. I don't, I don't want to specify that at all. But there, there could be additional stuff done if there was someone there that, for instance, could oversee stuff during the daytime or could oversee stuff on weekends or at least Saturdays. And what you said the time was the end? For? Uh, it's approximately uh, three. Two programs. There's somebody's doing after school, and then there's a group who's doing evening programming right now. So they're back to back. So it's about a six hour window. So are they open on Mondays? Monday through Friday right now. Yeah. yeah, they are. I, I drive by. I, I, there, there's you won't see as many vehicles because they get dropped off on vehicles. bus. They, well, they get dropped off. Oh, I do. Yes, yeah. Healthcare does the, the first one, and they have a van. Last night. Yeah. When? I drove by it last night. There was a couple cars in the parking lot. I didn't see any when I moved by there. I'm gonna tell you, I've been wondering whether it was open. That doesn't mean they're not in there. They, they no, I'm not there. saying the kids, but I do know if they had some supervision, somebody has a car. They uh, they mm -hmm. ride the bus. Everyone rides the bus over, and then they all ride the adults too. Most of them do, yeah, yeah, the initial group, yeah. Because someone has to be with the kids on the bus that they trans get transported over. Yeah. There's a couple different models. We can go all through it if you have any questions. All right. Let I'm me let me see if I can if I can summarize this just because I want to from the dollar point of view. There are two AmeriCorps positions in the budget at 16. Associated with this. Oh, no, no, no. There's the one AmeriCorps position associated with this, and then one AmeriCorps position oh. associated with this. Okay. Sorry. Now I understand. Because what I was looking at was the. We reduced the. That's where the 8600 comes from. Yes. Because when you. Somebody was talking about two AmeriCorps. So we, we have two right now. Um, but we we had proposed the youth development specialist position, which would replace one of those positions. So we went. So right now the city as a whole has one and a half, and next year the city as a whole will have two. It's just our department will be going from one and a half to one. Gotcha. So the way that we got thirty two seven was we said we're not going to replace the the. It's in the budget, but we're not going to. We may not use it if we use yes. the youth specialist. So therefore, it's thirty-two-seven. Yes. Now, you know, I know Keith's going in and updating that thing. We're going to have to make choices, obviously, because in my head, we don't have we've exceeded our savings that we had. So we're going to have to make choices mm -hmm. in a couple minutes. So, but I would put the thirty-two-seven in on the sheet, and then we can talk about as we go through it when we have figured out how we're going to balance this thing uh, so that I'm, I'm, I'm correct. 37 is correct up there. Is and, it, and it eliminates eliminates the one AmeriCorps position. So if we're going to the sheet, I don't know quite how to handle this because at the same time uh, we need a typo in the AmeriCorps position <coughs> that our department has because if you look right below that AmeriCorps mayor level adjustment, it, it was accidentally put in at 6,500, but it's supposed to be 8,600 because we accidentally put in the amount yeah. for the part time position. So there's a shortage just, of just 21. Yeah, we, we'll just let that self crack that since, since we have the other number, we'll just, we're good. You know, so, it okay. all comes out. Yeah. All right. It's just okay. Matter. Getting scared because I think I understand it. So, all right. So then we go to 457 plan. Is that X thing? 457. Yeah. We're done, right? Who's gonna? Yeah. Thank you guys. Thank you guys. Do we need a? Phil, do we need uh, Colonel? Colonel's here. No, I just I told Colonel Colonel was staying. I told him we t we had handled the safe streets and. I just you know. He's resting. In case you all wanted to round back to. Okay. No, I think I think we're fine. Yeah, I meant not both budgetary, but really more about what the state is doing. Oh, I, I didn't know if there were. Hardy, you have any question? Any questions? <laughs> yeah, <for us>? <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, guys. Appreciate it very much. What if we want to stick around to see this? You can stay <laughs> as long as you don't talk. No trouble, deal. My curiosity is, you know, what's the what what what's going on? We keep calling it Safe Streets. We're changing the name. 
What are I they doing? I you. It's an We're election not. year. <laughs> uh, well, this has been transitioning for a little while, but the state um, governor's office is, is moving away from safe streets mm -hmm. to EMSON, which is Maryland Intelligence, uh, Criminal Intelligence Network. It's a lot of similarities between that and safe streets. Uh, the difference of the focus is that it is, with Safe Streets, you had a top 25 adult list that was, there was criteria for an individual to get put on that list, uh, almost like a watch list mm -hmm. for criminal activity. They were a career criminal. And there was also a 25 juvenile list, same, same thing. So Emson does away with that, per se, and they focus more on uh, criminal networks. So you may have one or two individuals that are involved with cross-jurisdictional crimes. Mm -hmm. so in other words, and we all know that crime doesn't, is just not here in Salisbury. A lot of the crime we have stems outside the city, comes into Salisbury. So what they're focusing in on is the network of crime and how, how we can affect, how we might do something in the Cambridge area or the Eastern area, but it's, it's related to what's going on here in Salisbury. So it's, it's more, of a, more of a web, you know, world, which is... Really, with the with the officers we have assigned to uh, the gang unit now, uh, the WinTIF uh, task force, a lot of this stuff they're doing now anyway. They're doing they're doing anyway. So what we're doing is we're shifting focus on those type of units, and the overtime money that we get will be in direct support of those those type of units. So we may have some patrol officers that are doing an operation in support of WinTIF or in support of the gang unit, and so forth. So they're going after really the criminal network. So they're trying to really, the words they're using is dismantle, disrupt criminal activity as it stems outside the city. Um, so we have to, where, where Safe Streets was primarily the entire city, a little bit of Fruitland, a little bit of Del Mar. This really, there's really no boundary to this. This really stems outside, wherever you can tie in criminal activity as it relates to what's going on in Salisbury or the surrounding area. That's really the main difference. But a lot of the components, as far as what uh, the money's getting spent on, as far as salary positions, um, it's, it's basically the same. With the addition this year of what we put in for is the crime intel analyst. Uh, we feel like they're based on the work that's going to have to get done, and, and as far as the criminal network goes, that there is going to be a need uh, for, for that position there. Uh, and we looked at the, uh, the, the, um, the coordinator to be more of an outreach person to try not only focus in on bringing the partners together that are, you know, to make the grant work, but also community outreach, they get the community more involved in, in activities and, and trying to, you know, reduce crime, to help us, help us. So, uh, that's, that's what we call that. Would be, there would be work there, plenty of work. Uh, we also put in for some equipment. Um, the state was non-specific on how much money, that usually with Safe Streets, they say, here's how much money you're getting make it work, you know, and we have to maybe make some hard decisions that we're going to do. They're not putting a dollar figure on this. They're basically saying, tell us what you think is going to work, and then we'll see how much money we have that we can, we can give you to make it work. So we put in for some equipment, um, for some additional tag readers, uh, LPR, we put in for some video uh, surveillance cameras to assist with TIF and so on. So whether we get it or not, don't know. Uh, the answer is going to come down to dollars and cents. They did invite, uh, this, was a, this grant was invite only. So um, we were obviously invited, and they added uh, three or four other invites. So I don't know how much money the state has to how they're going to do that. Up. So everybody's submitting a proposal. Ours may look totally different than, say, PG County is, is submitting. The, the ours may be completely different based on what we think our, our needs are compared to what you know they might. So I think they're going to. The feeling I get is they're going to evaluate these and pick the best uh, what they think is the best of, of each, and then they may fund that. So we'll see. We've, we've been very successful getting funding so far, and this has been since 2009 with Safe Street. So I'm surprised um, that they, when they did, um, as, as Councilman Ireton pointed out, generally speaking, when you get a new governor, they usually change that right away. They usually make a change right away. And prior to Safe Streets, we had Wheat and Seed, and then before that was um, uh, a few other. You know, the names change. I think Safe Streets was the most comprehensive. It did the most uh, work, and there was more partners involved. This is what the state is really saying, it's just taking it to a, another level, uh, changing it somewhat again to, to more of a, more of a, if you, if you look at it this way, you're just doing away with the boundaries and you're just looking at how, how these How it actually works.
I'll give you an idea. There are a lot of people who are wanted because they violated probation that mm -hmm. live in Delaware mm -hmm. because it's only seven miles up the road. Mm -hmm. And we never, prior to 2011, spoke to anybody who lived outside right. the jurisdiction. So there were a lot of, during Safe Streets meeting, where people, people from Delaware State Police were looking at this list of people who were wanted or who were, and they were like, oh, we just had a meeting with the Camden, Delaware police. This person is in custody in Camden right now, like right there on that day. And you know, you were able to to find out that lines and the road mean nothing to people who are who are trying to not be found. Mm -hmm. So talking to the other jurisdictions was incredibly important. Even the Eastern Shore of Virginia, there was a couple we found. We did really reach for the stars on this grant. I think the total dollar figure on it's over six hundred thousand mm -hmm. uh, between the equipment and the positions. And um, we built in a reentry piece for uh, ECI with the. Uh, where Poplar Hill, uh, when they closed down, ECI assumed um, the the uh, pre-release. Um, and what that really amounted to is, is training. They were doing some, uh, I'll name a few, it was uh, blagger training was big for the uh, construction companies. That uh, that was big. They were hiring. Uh, we were providing the training for those folks. I think the for several years, the uh, council, mayor and council submitted a budget that included some funding. Uh, which which had to be cut for budgetary reasons, but we built that back in to see if that if that's something that they might. They didn't tell us no, so we kind of we were submitting it and see you know we're kind of just waiting to see how that's going to work. Um, the health department is getting some funding again for a peer a support specialist, which is basically tying into your opioid addiction, and uh, it's more of a peer counselor appeal uh, where they work directly with the addicts and the families of the addicts too work through issues, family counseling, and, and so forth. That is That has also been in the Safe Streets grant, so we built that back into the uh, EMSA, and we feel like that's been a benefit. Um, so we, uh, this isn't just enforcement. There are some pieces dealing with addiction, dealing with some, um, dealing with some re-entry of, of, of uh, the folks that are getting ready to release from ECI and so forth. So, like I said, they didn't tell us no, so we're building it in, and we'll just see where this thing, we'll know in a few weeks where, where to flush it out. Okay. Anything else for the Colonel? Thank you, sir. Yes, sir. Have a good day. Okay. Moving on. Anybody need a break? Yes. <laughs> yes. We have it. We have a need for a break. Five minutes is fine. <laughs> so um, the four fifty seven plan, Keith, you you did a worksheet on that. Right. Uh, yes. um, last year we had uh, heard from many of the personnel committees, and this is something that, that we've talked about up here, um, is increasing either the match or the, or the percentage that we contribute to um, for the 457, understanding that this is going to be with them hopefully for the rest of their life. This is um, an important benefit that we believe employees should be taking advantage of. Um, so maybe Keith, you could run us through some of the numbers that you played with. Okay, so currently uh, we have a four percent match. Uh, Keith, you got to make that larger. Yeah, I'm just really looking at that. Let me see to. if I can do that. I don't know. Let's see. Yeah, let's try it. Wow. Let's this course, this didn't get any bigger. Oh, zoom right there. Yeah. yeah. There and let me go two hundred, and that should do it. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I can Perfect. see that. I can see clearly now. <laughs> <laughs> I collapse that maybe, and then I'll be done. See you. Uh, so anyway, at, at four percent max, uh, currently we uh, we match at twenty five uh, percent. Um, so to increase that to uh, to, to fifty percent, it would cost us thirty five thousand dollars. To go to uh, seventy five, it would cost us sixty two thousand, and uh, to one, it would be 81.3. Now, to, to look at this, the same thing, but increasing the five, four to five percent, the same numbers um, at, at uh, to go to 50 percent, it would be 39 instead of 35, and at 75, it would be 69, and at one, it would be 94. Was this, and this is just a question, did we know about them asking for this before your budget was put together? 
Uh, they requested it last year. We did, yeah. and we, we uh, talked about it a bunch. Of and uh, honestly, we I, I forgot to, to bring it up and include it. Um, and you know, we we offer a, a strong benefits package already, um, but this is something else that could make us more competitive. Um, but it's you know. It's, it's we don't have a recruitment and retention issue. Yeah, I was going to say, is it's, there a turnover? It, it's, it's just a matter of, yeah, it's a benefit that. They've been asked for it. Do a due diligence, please bring it forward. Yeah. yeah. But it's also, I mean, it's, it's, it's worth the time. conversation. Yeah. If we have a <laughs> tougher year in the future, you know, where we have to make bigger conversations, we could submit that in that year because it's a smaller increase, you know, to offset other. Has it been one issues. year or two years since we did the annual? We're going into our fourth year. Or our fourth year of raises. Has it? Is yeah. that for you? Oh my God. Yeah. So the raises that we agreed to are plugged into this budget oh, yeah. as well. Yeah. Yeah. So I mean, if there's a year where we, you know, for some reason we don't do that, I'm great maybe healthcare. this I'm is something not, we offset with. Well. This don't work like this for other employees. No, no, great healthcare. Healthcare. <laughs> what? Oh, I was just agreeing with uh, Mr. Ireton there. It's pretty good. We know we can't do everything, but. As soon as we get about three lines down, we're going to know. We're really going to know how we can't do everything. <laughs> yeah. Can we reserve this question till that time? Yeah, I think we're, yeah. we're about ready. Right. <laughs> so we, we, have, we have the dollar value on this. I wouldn't, do you have anything in there yet? No, no. Don't put anything no, in, no, there in there. Let's go to the. Okay. Now you had. The other thing you had said you wanted to revisit, I don't know if you still want I've to. I've already talked. No. No. <laughs> All right. Um, no. So you want to go right down to the bottom? Yeah, let's go right to the bottom. All right. Seriously. We're at the total adjustments that have occurred at the council level. We've reduced the revenues. Um, you might remember last time we found out that the, um, based on the stipends and the, that the, uh, that the, 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 the volunteers were not going to be able to make um, the full amount of the um, uh, lease payment. So we had to reduce that by 53. So that's what this So we're picking it up and still getting the truck? Well, we committed to, to the payment, so we'll have to make up the difference. Yeah. <laughs> then uh, the total of the expenditures, uh, the, the, the total adjustments that we made, a total $61,000 reduction, thus the net difference is an in, is a uh, an increase um, or a reduction of the use of surplus of seven seventy eight hundred so the sur the use of surplus now budgeted is one seventy two one point seven eight two million in order to have it balanced yeah in order to have it balanced we were targeting we we thought a reasonable target was one seven so uh, we're eighty two thousand off that uh, target. and how much is are we allowed uh, well, <clears throat> our policy says, and we says w well, our policy for the uh, use of surplus is one percent of the general fund budget. And okay, so, and not being able to do that in my head, how much is that? Well, uh, that would be about uh, max is only four hundred seven thousand, but we've been deviating from that every year because our spending variance has been averaging uh, so that this. Uh, between one six and one seven. Some years we don't even use. Yeah, we so, put money back in. Mm -hmm. So well, we feel, we, we felt comfortable with, with this as a target. From the police department. Yeah, generally speaking. <laughs> so so we um, I don't to give you a sense of where we've been. Last year we used about two point two million dollars in surplus, and the year before that about two million dollars in surplus. And we tried to dial it down based on um, the council president's guidance um, that uh, we need to get back to the one six to one eight where we know we're going to put a, at least that much money back at the end of the year. Is there any suggestions from you all about if we wanted to do everything up top, what is there other places, other projects or other things that could be cut to save those things? Well, I mean, again, knowing that we've reduced the 
size of the general fund budget already, I, I would say we're not looking at a situation where you would need to make an adjustment. I think the adjustment up there is a, still within a, a very, very reasonable um, figure uh, and meets the kind of direction that we've gotten from last year in terms of where we'd like the, mm -hmm. um, the uh, general fund surplus to go. Um, but, I mean, if the I think there's a, still a couple things that you can do. One, we could do the AmeriCorps instead of uh, a staffer. Mm -hmm. You know, um, that's I just it, you know, sixty million, fifty million dollar budget. That this is if the accessible base went up. Mm -hmm. I see that your use of surplus went down. It just and other revenues went down as well, and some revenues went up. Well, what about projects? I mean, what about? Them? I don't know. I'm, I'm nobody's We're spending less this year. We tightened up on operations I, I, significantly. I understand that. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about larger projects, things that are. CIP, how many times? You know, stuff that saving in, in bond proceeds. I mean, if we, if we, I mean, really, you can't do anything with this except really the fire department because you're already on the hook. Which is entirely unfair, but that's a whole other bar as another situation. What do we, Mr. Council President? What are we trying to find here? How much money are we trying to find? Eighty-two thousand. Just eighty-two thousand. If you if you no. even need to find eighty-two thousand. I don't think we're trying to find eighty-two thousand. No, I don't, I don't think, think you need to try think it's to find eighty-two thousand. I'm just I'm, I'm trying. Give me one second. Let me just. So, so we went through that whole thing. We only get to the bottom of the page. We told we don't need to do anything. Eighty-two. Why do I take off four? I went seven eight here. So when we looked at that, I couldn't agree with that. That we were putting in. Oh, there is still one thing. Yeah, there would be 100 or 200 trying to get the four fire. And then I'm vehicle, which is against the fire. Yeah, we shouldn't be a user. So we're better than three months. Well, that would be a little bit better than three months. Yeah, those two are disconnected. The three months is how much we should have in our unassigned service. So that doesn't have anything to do with where. What do you think? What do you think? Uh, that yeah, number is short. Remember that was that had fallen as like six, six, uh, six, eight, and we're tar we're targeting more, you know, more like. Uh, I can seven. bring that financial up like seven something. Seven three. Oh, yes, yeah, somewhere up in there. So we got it's going to, we were not going to get there in one year. No, I know, I know. Yeah, yeah. No, I was just making that. Clear. No, no, yeah, yeah. I know that. Yeah, just making a small payment. Yeah, this is not. And that's got everything that we talked about except four, five, seven. <coughs> yes. Yep. It's all in there. And that in, does that include the savings on the 173 on the PPOT PO? It does. Uh, what we had to do, we had to pr prorate that from 139 because of, September, because, of, because, because of September. September. Yeah. Yeah. And it's got the use specialist. It's got the safe streets. It's got the AmeriCorps typo, and so. So really, the big piece was the, the PPO EPA because that's the hundred and four thousand dollars. If that didn't happen, it changes the numbers on. Yeah, then it jumps up. Then it would jump. Then it would jump up significantly. Right. Then you're looking at moving some numbers. Keith, how close did you come last year to the real number? I know you know. Oh, uh, well, we're not done. We're not done with. No, I mean last. <laughs> so oh, well, that's true. You're yeah, not done. Done with eighty. All right, go back. Go back. You're behind that. I mean, it's eighty-two. You're you're about seven. Well, we we go to our famous story we made in New York when we said we we value the use of surplus and. We, we said over eight years we had only a use of 200,000. So it's pretty fantastic over that, you know, Basically figure 50, 30 some million a year. And we had only used 200,000. The very next year we put in 200, so we went to zero over nine years. So it's pretty, pretty significant that the city's done a great job, the, the council and everyone, in making sure we don't get uh, too far from our objective, which is not to use surplus.
gosh, they never told me anything. Well, but <laughs> until the radio happened, told me to, in fairness, until the radio happened, and when the radio happened radio this now. year, we're going to, and we saw it on the balance sheet last year, uh, we're going to see it in our financial statement, in the statement of changes this year, where, we, where, we, where, where the fire truck is going to cause us to go into like a use of a very large amount Is that something that you can tell Barbicane Thornton before they come so that I don't necessarily have to well, see Well, they, they knew last life. year. That's why that's why we heard the speech. Is, is, uh, and it was mainly the radio. The, the, the fire truck's getting credit because it didn't come on time. But it was it was the radio system that we had to dig in and use seven to $800,000 of our surplus to make that happen. And, and that was great because we avoided debt, but it's put pressure on our reserves. Yeah. We're well, then, do you want that 1.7 to come down even further? Should we be looking well, at no, one, one and ten, or two? You know, uh, you know. So, we were targeting 1.7. We thought it was reasonable, and it, it, we, we expect that when we opened with the financial health uh, presentation, we suggested that that might put somewhere between 100 and 200 uh, thousand into surplus. Into so surplus. It's, it's a small payment, but we could make it up over time. Obviously, we took out 800. It's gonna. You can't put it all back in one year. You know, so I'm just so. being a little uncomfortable. We've gotten to the bottom of the page, and there's nothing to do. Well, it, I mean, can make that's it. that's what I thought we were avoiding all morning. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, it's not as bad as I thought it was going to be. It's the EPO, PPO piece is how, the, how. is the big kind of question. If you look at the only adjustments that we made, are right there. You've got. Plus thirty, plus thirty-two, plus two thousand. If we didn't have this, this for, then you're looking at. If we didn't have this, we'd still be we, at work. Yeah, yeah, we'd still be working. But we also put raises in there as well. Yeah, that's all in there. I, I understand that. It, and is this a big enough difference down at the bottom for us to reopen? My mind, no. Because we hit our target. Does, well, let me well, let me look the other way. Is there something that you're not comfortable with that's on that that was on that list? If there is, then let's talk about it. And we can no, it's it. not anything that's on that particular list. It's okay. just our list every year is seven things in a sixty million dollar budget, and that. That is historically what the council has done is has, has gone down into the minutia. Well, yeah, but I can remember I can remember sitting here for t an hour and a half for eight hundred dollars. Oh yeah, <laughs> me too. I'm not going back there. No, I understand that. I just <coughs> <laughs> yeah, that's bizarre. Well, I in the larger ticket projects that are out there that are adding money to the bonded debt, I have some concerns about spending money on those things while raising changing employee insurance raising water and sewer rates because it's not just a water rate it's a water and sewer rate correct uh, it just but they're different it just it, it it seems as if and this is nobody's fault but the good news gets to come from the people who introduced the budget the bad news gets to come from the city council <laughs> and i'm not saying that that isn't just the way it happens but it does become a little tiresome but if my colleagues are good with this, I'm good with this. But but we all, I mean, in all, in, I mean, we have other things that we need, we haven't tackled that we need to tackle. We are still underwater with trash uh, pickup. Yeah. And we heard the other night how ridiculous our cost was. However, if you look at the true and actual cost to dealer. <laughs> like the commercial. All right, we're about 30, last time I heard was $30. Somewhere 36. around thirty-six dollars off, so we're we're footing the bill. No, no, no I'm sorry, twenty-one percent. We're not we're not recovering twenty-one percent of our total cost. Okay, so that that's hold on, what? put it no, in there, let that percolate. So I was just giving a different a different yeah, right. I, I, that, that, that we're paying sixty-seven dollars. Um, the we're, rate, well, the rate. I think the rate. Um, so we have a little presentation on that if you wanted to revisit that. No, I just I'm just pointing right. it out that we have a we have another thing we haven't tackled yet that people are gonna think we're crazy. But our cost is But different. what I'm getting out in the public is is you're building these big ticket items 
over on this side while telling us that this stuff, and I say, well, the stuff isn't paying for itself. Whether or not we're building bike lanes and paths and amphitheaters is regardless of the fact that you're not paying enough for trash. <laughs> That's what I say. Yeah. But that doesn't necessarily, I know I'm not sure no, if that message no, gets I, through. Yeah. I, I hear you. Well, the, well, the amphitheater thing. was grant money. I, it, it, yeah. I understand I that, and I, they, yeah. and I say that. The, yeah. No, know. I understand. Yeah, I mean, it's... Is this, so there, is there any... Because without any expansion of the tax base except the small increments that happen just as a natural occurrence over time, mm -hmm. The larger picture, and this is what I don't understand. I understand the little pictures as they are presented to us, but the larger picture, the change in connection fees, mm -hmm. the reduction of connection fees to zero, and that netting, I just if we're looking over the long-term financial of, 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 of what we're doing, I don't know whether or not, and I'm not saying I didn't do this, I'm saying in some particular points I did just hoping it comes out, you know, hoping upon hope that, that Barbara Kane Thornton doesn't come in and say, General GFO says this can't go there anymore, or Blue Cross Blue Shield shows up and says, ah, now you got two people using prescriptions. It's very difficult to say to employees, we're doing these things over here, but you are still... <laughs> What was, you know, in the end, we get to say the raise was this and your insurance was this, and we hope it, the EPO PPO discussion will be very helpful saying mm -hmm. to them how much yeah. they can save. Uh, yeah, it's different buckets, but they see it as city. I, All of it. I, I, I do as well. Mm -hmm. I know I shouldn't, but I do. No, but I mean, I, I can understand the argument. Yeah. And you're always going to have certain people who are going to. Well, I mean, I can deal with, with, with what's his name from Middle Boulevard, not a problem, because we were in the, you know, and he was like, are we building a bronze statue for all these things? And I said, you know what? They said the exact same thing about me three years after I became mayor, and, we, and I looked at him and I said, and we said the exact same thing about the mayor before us. And we both threw our head back and laughed, because that's true, because everybody's only seeing it right. in their particular microcosm in time. Yeah. I just, what does everybody think? So, so, so let's, let's do, let me do, let me ask one thing. Keith, would you, for the benefit of the people at home that don't have the sheets and may not be able to see the sheet, summarize that this little box, go to the bottom. What it, describe this to as best you can, those, this, these numbers right here. Would you do that? Uh, we left the mayor's level with a uh, use of surplus of 1790000 that uh, was very close to our target of $1.7 million, so we thought that was sufficient. Um, all of the adjustments that we've made at the council level total, reducing that use of surplus by $7,817, so we've arrived to a use of surplus of $1,782,000 which is an improvement over the mayor level and uh, well within our target uh, at 1.7. And the 82, 88? <coughs> that, that would be if we hit the target on the nose. And that is good or bad? Based well, we were basically end. short of our target. We are short of the target by, by 82. 82 right. But we've improved. We were short of the target by 90 at the mayor level. So you've come closer to the target as a council by reaching 82. And that was a, as a result of the P combination of combination the other cuts. PPO. Yeah, yeah. The main cut was the PPO that funded then uh, the uh, uh, youth specialist position and the, the Safe Street. Uh, we call it Safe Street. You heard a new, new name. We haven't uh, quite uh, adopted yet, but it's the uh, grant match program for 30716 So. $2,843. So we could conceivably reduce that to 50000 if we did take out. And I'm not saying it can't come from somewhere else. These are the only options that are on the table right now. The, the new, thing, new money. New money. 
Yeah, if you, so we could reduce it as low as twenty. You could re, you could reduce it if you took everything out. Because we can't take out the lease okay. on the truck. That's correct. Yeah. But that's, that's yeah. That's, you can give it mind. So the the items are um, the safe streets, youth specialist, we could bring it down to 30 if we didn't do youth specialist. safe streets and youth specialist. But then we've got a community center sitting there. But the AmeriCorps people yeah, would you be. Still have the just, you still have the 8600 for the AmeriCorps person who could operate as we are doing currently. My, true, my, my concern is we, we approve okay. that specialist this year, but it then becomes a position that keeps growing and growing and growing and growing because we're giving this person raises and then we're giving this person every time we want to adjust. You know, it, it's, it's a small increment, but it's something that compounding. compounding. You know, I would be more comfortable if that were a contract position, if we're a part time position, and we weren't offering all these things. I don't think we need to offer all those things with it. If we're a position that could more easily be dissolved, if we find that it's not effective, you won't find that it's not effective after it comes on. Uh, <laughs> I'm not, I, don't mean, I don't mean to sound like that, but very seldom does anything come on. That, and, and but that, this is my concern, and, yeah. and, and then you well, know, I, I think the I think also if we if we go back a couple of years when we, you know, this particular the community centers is during a series of conversations of meetings that had hundreds of city residents in them mm -hmm. this is what they requested they requested community centers and they expect us to to facilitate them. that this is something that clearly came from the community I went to all of those meetings mm -hmm. uh, and so and this was the direction that that we decided yeah. to go on a couple years ago and the, the, the purpose was, of it, we had clear things going on in our community at the time, right. uh -huh. and this was this was part of the answer to address this stuff long term. So the idea is to do we invest in our community? Do we do we invest in yes. with the direction of what the people who mm -hmm. elected me? Mm -hmm. This is what they requested. Mm -hmm. This is what they asked for. But, yeah, but, but councilman voted, let's if find someplace else in the they, budget to fund it because yeah. there's because there's five six things on this list. There is another forty million dollars worth of budget out there, they, they want yeah. you to pull up right and these head. these are things that not necessarily that, that we came up with. So, I do you think you could find thirty-seven thousand five hundred dollars in all the other parts of this budget? I think you could find it if you want to go if you want to go look for it. I mean, at this particular point, we have basically. Well, well, actually, we came up with a youth specialist position simply because, if I'm not mistaken, we wanted to keep Amber. Am I right or am I wrong from the last meeting we had? Uh, I think that was a piece of the original conversation. And that's when I, I remember I was on the phone and we were okay. discussing and I was now, asking about what sort of from. information Do we actually in? need the youth specialist now or can we just work with the AmeriCorps? I think, I think we can, I think we will be fine with an AmeriCorps employee. Um, getting this up and running. This will be the first year that Newton comes on board. Um, we can take it slow with programming that, see how it goes, revisit it next year. If there is a need, we'll have some <coughs> yeah. sort of data to prove mm -hmm. that. Um, but I mean, certainly we could hit the ground faster with one, but you know, we, if we need to make decisions. But if we, you're if we you're take the right now, we're position and we narrow the focus onto what we wanted mm -hmm. to do instead yep. of. Yep. So there's you know, a couple of things, couple, because I did this for years. You've got an AmeriCorps position as someone who chooses to do a paid internship. That's basically what an AmeriCorps is. Mm -hmm. They are choosing to do that. You're going to get whoever's interested in that style mm -hmm. versus an active recruitment for somebody who may have a degree or, or, or is interested in this. Mm -hmm. Even at $32,000, it's still going to be a stepping to another direction. So retention of somebody who's going to be in that position, you don't get that through AmeriCorps because it's a, it's a one-year service period, maybe two if you're lucky. Um, and then this could just be a stepping stone. So... You're going to have turnover in that position regardless. 
Um, with this, you're going to get a higher level candidate than someone who is in a mayor court position because they're still trying to figure things out. They may not have the experience already. But on paper, an AmeriCorps, full-time AmeriCorps person is doing 35 hours a week. That's what they're committed to. So hours for hours, you're going to have about the same amount of level of input. You just may have to do a little bit more um, management of that position. Could we AmeriCorps, increase like we did this year? The AmeriCorps funding just a little? It's it's I mean, uh no. It's uh, it's already targeted. You don't. Um, they cover half. We cover half. So there is no. Oh, so they're making like seventeen. Uh, yeah, the AmeriCorps grant actually funds the other half of their salary. Okay, yep. so now with, so we wouldn't with go Amber it. being a, an AmeriCorps employee, and she did such a marvelous job, why do we think that some other you from... No, I, I do have yeah. high confidence that yes, we can find I do. someone that, I do. that would do a good I really job. Do. We've had high success with and our we have to tra- and, and what I'm saying is... We have to train these young people mm-hmm. for these positions. So this is a training mm-hmm. for them. You know, I mean, if we want them to go into leadership positions, this is where they start. The, the good news is this is like a paid intern. Yeah. So it's a paid internship. Yeah, that's and what I'm saying. And if you like the person, then we hire the person. And then the only, yeah, but the person the we were going to hire has gotten another position. And, and like you said, um, Mr. President, you... You don't create a position for the person. You create a position based off of the need. And I'm, I'm a big advocate of that because you don't, they're going to make the decisions based off of their own interests. Absolutely. So we need to figure out what is necessary. This position would greatly su- uh, subsidize what we're currently doing and improve our ability to reach the youth population in these different community outreach activities. However, we can still piece it together with what we currently have because we've been doing it the past year so I haven't heard anything quantifiable to say that these things are actually being am I the only person that hasn't heard anything what? to say that these things we're discussing are actually being achieved I haven't heard anything that what, would indicate the, the, that these goals the are actually being achieved well which, yeah. which goals the Whatever goals. the goals might be, that's another issue. Oh, the metrics. Yeah, the metrics. I'm not. I'm not seeing or hearing. I heard there was a bus stop thing. There was an event where you had ten young people attend a city hall. You know, because I'm all for the warm and fuzzy things, mm-hmm. sure. but then they're very difficult to measure mm-hmm. how effective we're actually being. And I'm not saying don't do it. Could we take a step back and not make it a full time job? Can we just? Well, I think you're, I think you're hearing that from us. That, yeah. that we're okay with the AmeriCorps. So we're yeah. saying it's going back. It sounds like what the consensus if, if is, yeah. is to get an AmeriCorps to a paid intern yes, look at to it, continue. continue where we are, and then evaluate it right. again. Yeah. Revisit it. Yeah, revisit, revisit it. We can evaluate those metrics, firm them up. Mm-hmm. We'll have two community centers online. We'll have a better idea next year of what we need. Because we're Could you apply for a third AmeriCorps person? The full time positions, there's only so many, mm-hmm. and yeah. they won't give, they won't give a lot to one site because they want to spread those out. Yeah. Um, so the likelihood of us getting three is. <laughs> Why, if you have people who are willing to volunteer and a need. <laughs> there's only so many numbers of. I got gotcha. you. Yeah. I understand. And, I and to and to go back to what you said, Jim, about there's got to be, when we started this process when we came in, once we got the budget. I had 39 items that to totaled over $6 million worth of things that I questioned. Mm-hmm. And I got answers on what well, you've got. Mm-hmm. I, I got answers on all those, those questions. So I feel comfortable enough based on the number of, the, of questions that I had that I don't think there's much skinny. And the other thing that, that I say, based on history, if you look at where we were when I first came on the council, the numbers going into surplus, if you remember, were humongous. The department's putting four hundred to six hundred thousand dollars into surplus. Mike, correct? Well, it was it about salary savings for well, the most part? No, not well. It is from the police from, department. <laughs> well, yeah, but there's other there were other departments that were contributing as right. well. But if you look at those, th- th- those days are gone. You really don't see that much going back. The that num that big number anymore. You see surplus going back, but you don't see the huge number. So I, I'm comfortable with it, but um, I mean, they've got a, the mayor and the uh, uh, executive branch got to come up with, if they have, I'm sure they wouldn't excessively pay up the budget, especially based on the questions that I asked. 
and everybody had a certain uh, yeah, you, question, so. you wouldn't be smart if you don't build a contingency into your budget not understanding how the fluctuation of certain things are but then there is truly padding the budget where you're just hiding money um, and I don't think we I mean we went through with our operations and we asked our departments to, f to find some money and kind of tr trim out some of the fat already so that we could make the mayor's budget work if we wanted to invest in some new Project. So I think we've gone through a pretty good exercise. Yeah, we, we went through everybody's budget, and just so you know, I mean, we cut deeply, and then we asked them to do a 6% cut of operating, and then we went back and cut more. Um, they, it was, um, so we, we have been in, um, but that, you know, um, we still have the stick with the Maricola. I'm, to be perfectly honest with you, Mr. Council President, for $32,000, I'm not going to say take it in a $60 million budget, just put it in there. I mean, my, my concern is more of a broader, larger picture of the departments are getting cut, insurance is going up, but there's a bunch of projects that are over here in this, in this bonded indebtedness. You want to review the CIP? Uh, no, I'm, I'm, I'm saying that from an outsider's perspective, it looks like there's all this going on, but what's actually happening is that stuff's getting cut, Departments are getting cut. Insurance is going up, and I, I just—I'm not sure. Sometimes I look at it and think it's putting lipstick on a pig, and sometimes I think, "Wow, that might be the best way to do that." And then 20 minutes later, I go, "I think it's putting lipstick on a pig." I'm not gonna—I'm not gonna take a youth specialist with all those things out of this out of a 60 million dollar budget for 37 thousand dollars. I'm just not gonna do it. I mean, that's just—that's just nitpicking the idea that again that there's only six things on there is. Do you, do you have any specific items? Well, I could go back to a whole lot of them, but that, that opens up. That, that, that's, a, that's more of a, of a stylistic and values call, and I'm not, I'm not going to do that to my mayor, and I'm not going to do that to you all. That, okay. But, no, we're, we're talking about stylistic. <laughs> Just differences. Yeah. All right, is everyone... Where are we? Because oh, oh. now I'm confused. So am I. I thought we had a uh, consensus, but it's not. You okay? I'm fine. You okay? You okay? I'm okay with what, 32? Yeah. Are we keeping it or are we cutting it? Mm -mm. Keeping it. Yeah. I'm saying, are you okay yeah. to keep it? Okay. We're okay. <laughs> no, you're not party? Or no? I thought you said yes. That's why I went down. The because it is a small amount, but it does my greater issue. We're going to continue to add on personnel, 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 personnel. And it seems like a small thing, but it... I was in the room right. just a you know, few it, it, You know ago. what I mean? It's just like that. If they already said they're cool with it. Yeah. Well, they would take it with going back to the AmeriCorps. Mm -hmm. Or, you know, when I was in the room a few minutes ago, I heard you say... So we're going back to... I heard you both say... Uh, the idea of it being a contract position that it was easier to eliminate. Are we not okay with that? I'm fine with I think that's that. What I'm saying is I would rather, uh, 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 and this is just where I believe that I can have an impact, a conservative approach to growing our, yeah. our, our staff. That's what I'm saying, a conservative approach to growing staff. If this is the first time that we see it happen, but that's typically what I'll come down on. I would like to see a more conservative path to growing our staff. Mm -hmm. Well, we get the well, same position as the contract. Yeah. I mean, yeah, yeah. So, we all would, but that doesn't is, mean it happens. But this is an opportunity to, to see how it works. And so, this is a way to do it. Yeah. So, if we, so, you, are you comfortable with a contract? Oh yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. April, a little confused. I am confused. Yeah, I, I think I'm, what I'm April really is saying is, if you can do it with AmeriCorps, you yeah. should do it with AmeriCorps. But AmeriCorps is not somebody who works for the city. Who, when you look at that that job description, it's all that's going on there. That's a lot. That's a lot of stuff going on. That's a lot. Of, and and what we want is what people told us at those meetings. I want those buildings open after school. I want those. I, mm -hmm. I need that at a time where the police chief says this is this is where these things are happening in the neighborhood. This is where 
scurrilousness and frivolity take over. This is where this is where we want people. If we were doing that and not all this other stuff that's in there, which I believe is all Theo's job, <laughs> all of it's Theo's job, <laughs> except the keeping <laughs> these things open. But I don't want to hire somebody so that it frees up these people when I think, A, they're doing a pretty good job of doing it. And it does seem like it's like the catch-all. Well, that's all the craziness. Let's all, let's all put that into one position. All right. But, uh, Rachel, my, ain't... My, my thing was the youth specialist. That wasn't there, was it last week? Week before last, we had the budget meeting. It was we being discussed, discussed it in the it last. Being, oh, that's so what we I'm saying. It. it was being discussed. They were going to go back and, and okay. put together some stuff. Okay. And, and we were doing numbers. this for what reason? I think one of the things doing is what? when that. Uh -huh. Doing what? We were we were discussing a youth specialist because of what reason? We were discussing a um, youth specialist because Amber. No, yeah, we're yes, using because, Amber as an example. We use Amber as an example. Yeah, that, that we were, did seem we like the thrust of the conversation. We were talking about hiring her as, as for that though. position. Well, you can probably go back further, but I would probably hear when you go back further. No, no, but no. if we go back a little further, the um, staff asked for that in the budget. Mm -hmm. We denied it Okay. because you know, we were trying to tighten things up. And that's what I'm trying we to do. We cut it, and in the meantime, we've learned that Amber's going to be moving on. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, Yes, she would likely be the person who would be offered the job. Yes. Um, you know, were she to still want it, but uh, that's not the case. So, um, so I think the question is, just what? How can we achieve the things that we want to achieve with respect to youth development programming? Um, maybe there are three ways: <coughs> AmeriCorps, contract, or full uh, position. I suspect it's probably only the contractual and the full position that could actually do all the things we want. Um, you know, I, I would, you know, I would say that let's remember that Theo's former position, um, you know, doesn't exist. We moved him out of it, you know, into the housing and homelessness position. Um, you know, so I'd say it's the contractual or the um, or the full. And if we did the AmeriCorps only, then I'd say we just have to tighten up our expectations about what they're going to produce. But I, I, I think that. The consensus sounds like we want to get we we need the full we need to get as much as we possibly can. The concern, however, is on an ongoing basis. Can we evaluate since it's a brand new position? I like the idea of contract because then you can evaluate either the success or That's failure, well. and then if it becomes you know this is the right thing to do, and then we can go ahead and make it a full time position and then fund it. So. That would be my, did I catch everybody's sort of concern? Yeah. No. I think you, you're saying you sort of went. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, it, it, uh, I, I think we that's maybe a, a good approach as far as maybe determining metrics on the position and what we can achieve. I, I think it's going to be, when you do a contract position, you're looking at just not picking up their, their benefits package, mm -hmm. basically. Mm -hmm. You're going to get somebody who either A, is not worried about it, or B, is on a different plan or something. It is going to be a, a different caliber applicant than if it's an AmeriCorps person. So you would have a closer validation of what you could do with that position and then decide, oh, we want to keep this on, we'll add the benefits package in the future or, or go away. I don't think you're going to get a true account through an AmeriCorps position of what is capable of a full-time position just because of the nature yeah, I, of that mm -hmm. position. And I, I think, personally, as good as the AmeriCorps person would be, even if it was Amber, and she was still, I'm not sure that based on that de description that we saw, I mean, that's a pretty hefty handful. Uh, and maybe and maybe we'll find out during this process that it, that's too much, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, <coughs> or you need another level or something. but. I, I like the idea of being able to do a contract position, which is a year-to-year -year position until we become comfortable enough with the direction we're going to go in. So if we can make that recommendation, then I think we can proceed. I'll go for it. Okay. Okay. All right. What did you say? I think, is there anything else that we've forgotten? <laughs> I certainly hope not. <laughs>
Anything else? Yeah. Here. What was the one thing we were talking about that we had in the 457? We dropped that. No, there was something else. We had the fire for a person. The fire. The grant amount to save students. That was a lot. There's a lot of money in that. Yeah. So I was just saying. Order the rates, the health care rates, police, safe streets, and grant match. Oh, the, the trash. That 30000 may or may not be Oh, no, no, I wasn't bringing that up. The grant again, match. Not, uh -huh. That's only if we get the no, that's, so that's still, the future. Okay. That still okay. may or may not happen. That'd be I mean, too much. But I'm just pointing out that there's always going to be. Money. People think that, you know, yeah. we're just charging them for stuff. And here we are with this this delta. Is is okay. That will uh, pretty much wrap it up. I want to thank publicly uh, the mayor and his staff, thank you. especially Keith. Uh, thank the council members for their time. Uh, again, um, it's gotten smoother every year. Uh, we're spending more time talking about the issues and reading the stuff, which I think is the way it's designed. So uh, with that, Good to go. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you.